Hello everyone and welcome to the Immortal Break the Game Weekly Alpha Edition number 32. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fear, whichever you prefer. Joined this week by ZK. How's it going, ZK? Pretty good, pretty good. Week 32. Well, number 32. I'm not sure how many weeks we've been at this, but... Uh, uh, it's more or less, yeah. More yeah. or less since the alpha started. Ooh, so 20 weeks till the alpha anniversary. Yeah, sounds about right. That'd be May. Yeah. Or well, is it May? I want to say I'm May. Not, I'm not sure anymore. Well, it's 20 weeks from now, anyway. Whenever that is. Could be Jan. Yeah. Well, anyways, we've got a 1v1 tournament. It's going to be a pretty fun one. We have eight players participating this time. We're starting off with an exciting one. Uh, we're starting off with uh, Shadow Murloc versus Not a Voyeur. Shadow Murloc, one of those players that used to play quite a bit, hasn't been as active lately, but, you know, got to a few finals, and so has always been a pretty great player. And Not a Voyeur, who's just been getting better and better every week. That has been a very fun development to watch from them, for sure. Both players going Mala today, on the first game, at least. It's the way to go, the Mala blood blood powers. Kind of fun, you know? I, 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 I do, know you've, I do know. You've been, enjoying, <laughs> you've been enjoying Mala quite a bit lately. I have been. I've been messing around a little bit with Ajari just to make sure that I don't get caught in a rut of setting up blood wells and then getting locked in one spot. Because that's one thing that's easy to do with Mala, is just to get like tied up and I want to hold this location and then you never move out. Yeah, that's true. Ma Mal is a bit more stationary than Ajari or a little Zul. bit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, no matter no matter the immortal, you have to kind of get map control no matter what. But yeah, Zol and Ajari are a bit more potent for that. But it doesn't really matter. They both work out in the end. They do yeah. indeed, and that's well. I'm curious what both players are going to be doing. Voyeur going very early units, which has become a bit of a po more popular strategy lately. Shadow Murloc. Similar, but with a bit more of an economy. Totally not aware. Doubling down on the unit counts. So they're going to be a fair bit more aggressive early on. They're going to have to do a bit of damage. Either get a significant lead on Pyre or punish Shadow Murloc for their expansions. Because Shadow Murloc, in the next few minutes, is going to be running away with the economy. Yep. Not of Lord also heading up for faster Aether. So that can that can lead to a bigger tech advantage if we get there. Of course, they're both going to fight for the same Pyre camp. So this is my... Uh... Be able to start. Ooh, a, a small relief for Shadow Monitor Lock. Yeah, managing to stri strike totally on Voyeur from behind. Voyeur unable to take this fight at all, losing most of their mass hunters, all of their mass hunters in the process. Only oh, taking man. one return. Well, that's that's a rough start for him. Of course, it's not game ending. It's just not where you want to start with, especially mm -hmm. opening up without the expansion. It's just a very painful start. And from there, Shadow Monitor Lock. And Voyeur. Wants to, I mean, they need to get something back. They need to get a win with their army. And so far, it's looks like it's no good. Yeah, exactly. Well, Shadow Murloc bringing the teapot from the back. He sees everything happening and is able to uh, get in there. But, man, Sh Shadow Murloc getting an early lead. What's the plan for Not of Warrior? He already has the God Heart. Uh, so he's taking up. Oh, wow. Okay. Very fast. Early so that, yes, that's going to be a bit of a gambit going up here. Oh, is that what Voyeur's Gambit is? Sacrifice the expansion in order to get very, very early Dread Sisters. Yeah, exactly. He's All heading right. for it. And that, that Gambit's going to be tricky. I mean, as it stands now, Shadow Murloc does have a... Does have an army that's reasonably vulnerable to Dread Sisters? I mean, granted, you have Dread Sisters, you have Bloodbound... I'm do thinking theoretically blood bounce. Yeah, I'm thinking blood bounce might be the more immediately useful choice. Yeah, exactly. You can jump on stuff, you can get the more. But with a number of mass hunters like that, you don't have the invisibility of the Whitewood Reapers. You can jump on them and run back, but my, they don't have that much HP. They might just get sniped on it. We'll see how he ends up going for it and what type of, uh, of play he's heading mm -hmm. for. It does take quite a while to build up, though. Well, that's why I was. That's why I think blood bounds are likely because of the time. Yeah. Because Dread Sisters, yeah, you can get Birthing Storm off, but you don't have... You have to research Birthing Storm first. That takes a while. Shadow Murloc once again. again getting the number advantage here. Total Nightmare does grab the Pyre at the cost of half their army. It's Shadow not Murloc. the best raid. It's not the oh, best raid. no, it's not. <laughs> Murloc knows it. Going for the chase. Taking what damage they can off Voyeur, who's finally gone for their expansion. Yeah, Shadow Murloc has free to rain in Voyeur's base. Let's yeah, see. that's the thing. Shadow Murloc can just run around here. What can Voyeur even do to stop this? Well, he is going for the early spellcasters. He has the healing of the of the tower at the top. 
but the tower and the healing might not be enough. We've seen offering him not yet from Shadow Murloc. He might just be saving it up before using it for a real fight. And every time Voyer uses it, he loses a bit of HP. That's the risk. Granted, with the Red Veil, Total Denial Voyer could upgrade fully, the, could get a fully upgraded offering. Actually, get the attack speed upgrade and everything. That's also a good gambit. On the other side, Icors are going to be coming out for Shadow Murloc. So basically the best counter to these early game units with, with the kiting, especially if you get all the upgrades, they get really fast. Get it in your face and stop anything from happening. That's something Dread Sisters are going to be really effective at dealing with, though. Oh, that's Because true. while you need to, yeah, you need to upgrade the Birthing Storm, you don't need to upgrade their root. So with some good placement, Total Denial of Vera could stop the Icor right in their tracks, completely nullify their speed advantage. Yeah, uh, this way might be the Shadow oh, Okay, he's getting a few of them. I was wondering if he if he was intending to just get it in case, right? If in case you're getting overrun with them, you can, okay, I'm going to get out a few Icors just to help defend. But at this point, it seems more like, okay, he's going to get a few and then heading straight for the Bone Canopy, getting the mm. air units up and running. That's... That's going to be likely a way to split Voyeur's attention. I mean, direct assault with Thrums is going to be suicide against as many mass hunters, but going around the back, trying to take out what exp what you can out of expansions. We'll see nice. what they have going for uh, with those, but for now, it is going to be Ikor coming in face off against Dread Sister Mass Hunter. And Voyeur moving out. Shadow Murloc able to sneak behind, putting, getting the back lines, hitting the Dread Sisters immediately. Voyeur does get the first root off, splitting the army. Second root drop as well, but that's at the cost of both Dread Sisters. Totally not a warrior, unable to take full advantage of splitting their opponent's army, having lost their spellcaster, having lost the entire point of getting that early tech. And Shadow Murloc adding insult to injury, setting up Red Harvest just to make it impossible to fight into them. And from there, not a warrior has to head back to his base the long way around. Shadow Murloc going right through the center. And he has a potential to cause some damage. Of course, the tower is up for not a warrior. So that's going to help a lot in this defense. Tower and Bloodwell both, so taking a fight near the Bloodwell does mean Voyeur will get extra pyre. But that's... I mean, Numbers how much are, are they able to get before they just lose everything? Voyeur coming around the back as the reinforcements back in, as well as their main army. Able to push back Shadow Murloc with minimal losses, but again, that's after losing the Dread Sisters. Yeah, getting more Dread Sisters front, at the back of it. On the other side, it's a massive I-Course coming for Shadow Murloc. He just loves those dogs. Or lizard and I can't blame them. Yeah. Beautiful I don't know guys. what they are, but they are cute. And very good at their, what they do. Yeah, shooting is... acid down your spine, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, external digestion. <laughs> the best type of digestion. The one where you don't even have to worry about your food. It's already digested before you eat it. I mean, that sounds... Efficient. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what you're going for, Let's go for, with right? that. Let's go with that. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> It's a very efficient way of eating. Just don't have to make your body work at it afterwards. You're just like, oh. yeah, just, just lap it up, I guess. Mm. That's the way of the future. Those icors are just more evolved in their ways of eating. Well, Voyeur shifting a bit more into Kittle focus strategy. Mm -hmm. Incubator. Yeah, a few incubators coming out. Yeah, one at a time. He's shooting them out, and hopefully the three units they, they spawn can get him back into this... Uh, early disadvantage after losing some very expensive units. Of course, he's not in and out. Shadow well, Murloc getting his third base up. Wow. That not third a base, well. even on both sides, I, this point, Shadow Murloc, they had the early economic lead, but everything's kind of gone back and forth in such a way that it's pretty even now. Like, Shadow Murloc, despite the early economic lead, Voyeur was able to hold off the army well enough that Shadow Murloc didn't feel confident getting an early third. Yeah, that's for sure. He got some damage on the tower, but damage on the tower does not win games. No, that's like the least important damage. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't heal up. That is something, I suppose. But yeah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna make a big impact. Shadow Murloc still poking around, getting his own tower on the corner. That's something we haven't seen quite as much Ooh. lately. It's They're moving we... in though. They're moving in. Voyeur coming around the side. We'll be able to intercept this time with the right front line at the front. Dropping another root. Again, the birthing storm. Now we're starting to see some Kittle drops set up for Total Nana Voyeur. Second birthing storm drops in the back lines. Kittle collapse is imminent for Total Nana Voyeur to take this fight, pushing Shadow Murloc back. Shadow Murloc still, still daring to push this, but no, it's become clear. Voyeur can now defend themselves. 
yeah, having all the spellcasters, we see that the Dread Sisters have no HP because at the end of the day, they're just going to sacrifice themselves to cast their spells, and that's what they've done. They got all, all their spells up and running, used their blood, their HP to cast them, and now, well, Chattermot was forced to retreat after another small loss on the on the fight front. That being said, this is where the that tower becomes extremely useful because your blood well provides healing, tower provides healing, both together, that just accelerates everything. The Turtle and Avoir can very easily just go for even a counterattack if they wanted to. Be a little bit risky, but like the timing they have because of that just makes it that much harder for Shadow Murloc to actually break in. Quite curious, we see Shadow Murloc. Total Not of War is kind of following the meta we've been seeing with Mal lately. A lot of units that just want to spawn Keto, which really is the goal of it, right? Incubators oh, yeah. plus the Dread Sisters. Shadow Murloc going for a bit more uh, unit focus, but at this point, let's see how it goes. He's coming in, but gets. Yeah, he gets forced back immediately. He doesn't want to engage where he doesn't need to, really. No, they did get in big units, so Shadow Murloc's going to be a bit of a tougher fight come the next assault. Voyeur does have some blood in reserve. They could embiggen their units if they so chose. They seem to be waiting for the right moment. Indeed. Uh, Sean Murloc heading on the back way to find another angle of attack. Not a Voyer doesn't see it coming, but he's getting back in position anyway and has a lot of static defense already. That'll buy them enough time to get back in and deal with this. Voyer. Little bit of a tricky position. They do have a lot of damage units thanks to the earlier offerings, but again, Shadow Murloc, they had, took some pretty heavy losses that last fight, and now Voyeur's able to just continue to blow them off. Do not fight here, says Totally Not a Voyeur, and Shadow Murloc is inclined to agree. Yeah, heading right out, out, right back out, and loses all his beautiful spiders. I love these spiders, and he's just letting them go at the back of the army. It's not really a choice, but they're just not. No, as fast. no, that's. They got caught out of position. Shadow Murloc does have Dread Sisters now. We are going to see... We are going to see Kittle development both ways. And Shadow Murloc, slight advantage on the health. Yeah, Total Night of Warriors, they're going to very quickly lose their Masked Hunters to Birthing Storm. Just because of all the offering usage. Yeah, we see the big advantage also of having the tower. That means Shadow, Shadow Murloc gets to heal up his units. While Night of Warrior has to head back all the way home to heal them up. And at this point, he really doesn't have a choice but to do that. His units are so low on the red. He needs he needs that that HP to be able to just cast offering and oh that tower and spike yeah Oof. that complicates things somewhat. I mean, they still have a tower, but having to pull back like that gives Shadow Murloc like, that much more map control. Exactly. Behind this, no special tech more than that. He he does want the Dread Sisters as oh. well, like his opponent. He saw how effective they were and said, <laughs> "Yeah, oh, double down do an altar." Now. Both players are getting four bases, so I am going to be expecting Behemoths to pop up sooner or later. But neither one's really building up to getting any bone canopies. May just be pure infantry the rest of the match. Still coming around the side, totally not aware. Able to hit the spellcasters, not before the birthing storms go off. Shadow Murloc will be put applying pressure that way. That was mass hunters. Shadow Murloc has the significant unit advantage here. Totally not aware with the resonance trying to pull the some kind of splash damage, but it's just not enough. Totally not a voyeur. Without a front line, forced to retreat as Shadow Murloc takes voyeur's third. And not a voyeur's reinforcement coming in slowly but surely, but it might the trickle might just be a bit too slow to save that base. As you said, it's going down. He doesn't have enough to save it. He roots down the Dread Sister. That's a nice kill before losing his base, so at least he gets some of those expensive units taken care of. Uh, but, not, but he still loses his base, and but looking at the army mm. value, it's pretty. It's still pretty close. A lot of Nod of Warriors army is still being rebuilt. But Shadow Murloc is only at 2,600. They are. Shadow Murloc lost a lot of their tech units while Voyeur lost most of their front line. Of course, Voyeur having lost that third base means ally production is going to be that much harder to get going. And their fourth is threatened as well. Voyeur going for counterattacks instead of defense. And quite frankly, I can't say I'm surprised. Go for the counterattack. First off, Shadow Murloc has to come to you. And set, more importantly, Shadow Murloc's got five bases so far. If Voyeur can at least take one of them, maybe even two of them, that will even things out some. But no, no, it's... Yeah, he lost the base. He doesn't want to lose another one. It's kind of That's expensive true. to lose too many. Uh, it needs to have at least some economy alive. Behind all that, of course, as you said, Shadow Murloc's able to establish his fifth base without any 
trouble, really. It's still going to be setting up. And behind this, is anyone going for the deep nest? And there's the deep nest going down. Time. Yeah. Ooh, even heading for some resin. It's beautiful. My beautiful resin boys coming out on both sides. Not a unit we've seen a whole lot of lately, but it is nice that they pop up. You know, you got a lot of... Got a lot of tiny enemies to deal with. It's mm -hmm. not a bad idea to have splash damage. And they'll be able to get in the way and just pop off from the back lines. H having that back line supportive attack just means there's more units shooting at you. More units shooting is always good. <laughs> well, more units shooting your opponent is always good for sure. Yeah, don't shoot yourself, guys. That's uh, that's not the Icors. Icors digest stuff. They don't really shoot their own stuff. They just eat you no. afterwards. Completely different. I love these forward towers as well. Shire Merlot really playing the tower the tower game, right? Establishing towers all over the map, getting map control in that way. <laughs> I'm sorry, are you playing Warzone? <laughs> <laughs> he did used to play a lot of Warzone, although if I remember, he used to be the cheeser. He got to the finals just yeah. cheesing his way all the way to finals. You know, towers are towers. You gotta oh. love them. Oh no. Okay, this harassment. Maybe. Voyeur sending their entire army back to deal with this. Thankfully, some of it will be in the front lines for Shadow Merlot's inevitable frontal assault, but that's still... Great splitting from Shadow, Mur Shadow Murloc. Opening up the third once again and able to take that out with very little resistance. Voyeur forced to regroup. And by the time they get back up, that third will be gone. He's out of position. Best, but no, they, yeah, the, that position's gone. And now the behemoths on the field. Shadow Murloc is getting more and more ahead just on tech alone, if not... Not counting their econ economic lead, having just gotten their sixth and seventh bases. Oh, yeah. always you can always get more bases. Oh, and oof, yeah, Brothering Storm on the opponent. incubator. Now, Brothering Storm Revenge on to Shadow Murloc. Voyeur able to get a little bit of damage from that, but it's not quite enough to actually start getting Kittle going. Yeah, there's been a lot of burfings of all the mass hunters of Shadow Murloc. So it has to be careful not to push in too hard, as those units are very low on HP. Well, they may be low on HP, but they're not really needed right now. The Resonance providing enough of a threat. Yeah, like this in Shadow Murloc is not... He doesn't have to commit to this. He can run back home and just leave one Resonance to scare his opponent off. It's going to be taken care of pretty easily. It is. It is. But still, the point is that Shadow Murloc maintains map control. Like, Voyeur... They're pretty even on army. They actually have an amazing potential for tech units. But having lost those alloy producing bases, they just cannot spend that ether. There's quite an amount. There is a limit how many Dread Sisters you want. They're pretty good, but you need that front line in front of them to take care of everything. And the Behemoths also providing a great front line, those early Ketos. Hey, here comes the push. Rain of Blood comes down for Nautivore. He yeah. wants this fight. He wants to take it. Going all in to get the root. Get the surround onto Shadow Murloc's forces. Shadow Murloc, not with that much in the way of Birthing Storm in their side. And falling back, back to their base, has the Blood Well of support. Voyeur's army a little bit smaller, but again, solid birthing storms. A little bit of extra damage will could turn, potentially turn this around as the Kittle starts spawning. And there they go. Totally not Voyeur starting to get those Kittle up. Yeah, the resident at the back also dealing with a decent amount of match on top of it. The tower tower giving a giving just an extra base of support. And any fine. Not if Voyeur tries to jump on it, the tower will just be the final line of defense. He can't push through as two more behemoths join the field. And Not of is just going to be lacking in money at yep. this point. Yeah, unfortunately, we are seeing the effects of having half the number of expansions of your opponents, especially as the main base has been mined out. The natural is pretty close to as well. Or nearly mined out, and the natural is close as well. And the Bastion is done. Like, not a whole lot going for voyeur economically speaking and that's gotta say they're fighting valiantly despite it like doing a really good job holding the line it's just there's only so much you can do before it catches up to you and yeah, we're seeing the effect of his <coughs> spellcasters his great use of a spellcaster throughout this whole game just getting all his opponent's units to very low hp and just killing him off with the birthing storm you keto out of course at the end of the day this is a game about map control, about getting as many bases you can, denying your opponent's bases. Shadow Merlot has done both of those in droves, and that's what gives him a pretty decent lead, at least in that front. Army-wise, it seems pretty de pretty equal, but cannot afford to attack into his opponent. All he can really do is find weak points, attack from them. 
Speaking of weak points, though, Shadow Malak having opened up the boulders in the back lines, able to send a little harassment squad over to deal with Voyeur's main base, which... Not sure how much Voyeur's gonna be worried about that. Send a few units back to deal with that. It's not gonna be too big of a problem. Does appear that they've noticed, however. Yeah, pulling his units back, of course. Just stopping the mine. There's not much mining left. But still, any mining you can get at this point, you want to have it. I mean, if they get the Red Veil, that will be huge. And it seems Voyeurs kind of realize that, you know what? Mining doesn't count, but tech certainly does. <laughs> and there's only four of them. Symbiotes really are pretty strong. only four of them. Yeah, symbiotes, exactly. The workers in this game are them. surprisingly strong. Yeah, they can eat for everything. But going from a small worker fight to the full-on brawl. Drop Shadow Murloc getting hit hard by the Birthing Storms. Will to send back some of their own. Turn them out Voyeur. I'm going to push back, but Shadow Murloc with the Resonance is just providing too much... Like, Resonance Behemoth both providing too much damage for Voyeur to easily deal with. Voyeur kind of splitting up Shadow Murloc's force here, but doesn't really have the unit, the unit strength to capitalize on that. And I see Shadow Murloc coming forward with all his behemoths, all his... Uh... I was resident setting up with the blood well on the hill. And yeah, good point of attack to attack this third. And it's still not really up and running. <laughs> it's never oh. been up and running. This entire game, this third, has struggled to be up and running. Yeah, he's done his best to get it up. But at this point, just a keto might be enough to take it down. But no, he's going to defend it from the keto. But the HP is so low on it. Any attack from Shadow Murloc will take it out. And Voyeur basically can't use it. They, need, they desperately need that third, but... How they're going to hold it, I have no idea. Uh, exactly at this point, Shadow Murloc just setting up in front. Can take it slow. He has all the bases in the world. He doesn't have to push his opponent strongly. He can just take his time, force his opponent to jump on him. He even can set out a, a few of his free units with the behemoths if he desires. And oh, oh wow. okay, wow. All right, go for mass resonance. Make sh that does help with splash. I mean, a little defense. vulnerable to the mass kittle. But does help with Splash. Does allow them to take out the Blood Well, potentially. Need a spotter for it, and they'll be fine. Actually, now that they know that, exactly what's going to happen. Totally enough, we will be able to dislodge this Blood Well setup. It's as soon as they get a spotter on it. Yeah, they're a bit out of range of each other. Well, they can't see each other, that's for sure. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So really what it comes down to is having the spotter. Unfortunately, Voyeur does not have any, like, scout units they can spare at the moment. But hey, the Resonants are paying off between the Root and the Birthing Storm. Shadow Murloc going into the fight, but unfortunately for Voyeur, they, all they have are the Resonants. Shadow Murloc realizing this, pushing in once again. All the Red Sisters gone. Shadow Murloc able to just surround Voyeur's force. And Valiant effort from the Resonance is simply not enough, even with the reinforcements on the Mass Hunters. Shadow Murloc's own reinforcements coming in to clean this up, and that is Shadow Murloc taking Game 1 on Lost Province. Great game from Shadow Murloc, really just showing his experience with uh, with Immortal from the past, just showing up, yeah, I'm just going to take the whole map and attack a few times and take it slow and easy, just expand, get more bases, stop you from taking more bases, mm -hmm. and then once I have an overwhelming force, that's when I'll kill you and kill him he did and that was really that was a very smart play when it came to just knowing when to push i do think the resonance from voyeur were i mean it's a bit of a desperate move but it, it could have worked the other thing i could have i could see would have been if they throw as a call so call have become less popular lately because kittle are seen as a frontliner that you can use instead as a call and they don't cost alloy or ether or anything whereas a call costs both but given the amount of ether voyeur had i could see resonance as a way to tank things out. It's a bit it's a bit the dream, right? You want those resident you want those residents to be able to deal with this army and not be able to jump to be jumped on. Fortunately this mm -hmm. time, with all the frontlining provided by the behemoths and just having that many hits, he was able to defend quite well and get on there. And with that, Shadow Murloc having taken game one, we're gonna be moving moving on to Frontiers by Voyeur's choice. Yeah, it's a map Shadow Murloc might just be a bit less proficient with. Not of Warrior has been practicing on luck quite a bit lately. So we'll see how it goes here. I'm actually kind of curious, are they going to be going for the same Immortals as well?
Not on this has... map. Yeah. yeah. Orzum's pretty I mean, good on this map. Orzum, Orzum is different. pretty good on this map. That's the thing. It's a very defensive map. As, uh, but we've seen, we haven't seen uh, Not of War play anything else than Malin and Jari. And as I said, he's going for a Jari this time around. As Shadowmarlock sticks with Mala. Both heading for slightly different Immortals. Oh, slightly different. A Jari is very different from, uh, from Mala for sure. Shadowmarlock. Which is weird because I like both of them. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stylistically, they're both fun. They're both about getting in your face, in your opponent's face. In they some are. Ways. Yeah, that is the thing they have in common is that when you get into a fight, you drop fire to supplement your army. Mm. Either shielding them or just getting killed when units die. Mm. Yeah, one or the other. And this time around, not of war heading for an expansion first into Legion Hall without getting any Ether at all. On the other side of things, Shadow Murloc getting his units out as soon as possible with a bit of Ether, delaying his expansion to get that early pirate, early map control. We saw how useful the map control was for him last game, so can't fault him for it. Well, we'll see if the gamma pays off. Again, this is becoming a little bit more popular lately, having this kind of one base, one base early unit play. Yeah, I'm sure you can get some really tight timings here with uh, with the pirate with the power coming out early and denying it from your opponent. You just get hit a timing where you have the pirate advantage, just jump on your opponent's base. So you can get some decent damage. Maybe even can't even get their base down. That'd be the best, best, best that, scenario. That would be the best scenario. Very risky scenario, but if it worked out, boy, would it be mm. worth it. Yeah, Sherman Log behind this. Expanding, so really not going for that early aggression. Pretty much been scared. Not of War hasn't really scouted. His teapot is out of here. It's not, it's not on the map anymore. And no teapot to really hang out on the map. There's Shadow Murloc's teapot to scout out stuff for his from his opponent. Yeah, but the one in the main base got taken out, so... Voyeur able to mostly keep their tech safe. Oh, but not... Not Voyeur coming just in time to get the Pyre, steal it from his opponent. And there's <laughs> nothing Shadow Murloc can do, so his early Gambit didn't pay off this time around. Not Voyeur coming just in time for it. And good call in the camp, too. And I, I'm assuming he saw it from the from the vision. He saw the tower. He, he saw it at the base at the at the vision. Was able to uh, just jump true, right yeah. immediately. Yeah, I guess the better thing would have been Voyeur maybe go for the southeast. <laughs> <laughs> so he's for hoping the eastern for... pyre camp. So he was hoping for, but not this time around. And behind, oh, it seems like Shamrock really heading for just a lot of mass hunters. No murder hollow, no neurosite. Yeah, that's. That is a bunch of undergraded mass hunters, which is a choice. That that is a choice you can make. <laughs> Generally, we do want to see the the offering coming up as fast as possible, able to jump on those uh, Sipari. Not this time around. Of course, Sipari don't really want to chase too bad either. No, they will be cut if they do. Oh, boy! <laughs> Just being as annoying as he can be. Yeah, that, not not killing it. Not killing it that last ancient because, or the symbiote, the neutral symbiote, because, well, obviously they don't want to let the pyre go. Like, they can't take the pyre, but they can certainly stop Shadow Murloc from doing so. Or slow it down, anyway. Voyeur, I want to attack they're going for now. Because they've had, they've had these five spire for a while. It makes me suspect that they're just rapidly building up. Oh, yeah, right into that, right into Dervish. It's a bit of a gambit, but it should work out against so many mass hunters. But he's completely out of position at this point as Shadow Murloc gets right into his face, into his base, and tries to destroy everything. Two Dervish are coming in, but that is not enough to deal with that many mass hunters. No, you need at least five, but let's see what two can do. Shadow Voyeur. No, they've they realized they got they gotta find a good position to work with here. Trying to bait these mass hunters into the tower. And at this point, it's really he wants to keep the space alive, so he just has to have enough units to keep it alive. Oh, and losing, losing one the of dervish. dervish, losing the dervish. Sapari able to come round back to help out, but it's is it going to be enough to save the natural? It does not seem likely. Both dervish get down. House of the Fading Saints almost done. That would allow for dervish upgrades, but it's, it's not going to matter if they're all dead. If everything Voyeur has built up has been lost, remember Voyeur started out with an economic build, so losing their base like this is the exact thing Shadow Murloc wanted. That's one of those things you need to be careful of. If you head up for tech too fast while expanding, it's really a big gambit. And that's what Voyeur's Gambit was this time around. Heading for the tech and the 
and the base without getting any army. Topit trying to head for Pyro on the map. Shadow Merlot exploited it masterfully this time around. And hey, get their base up, get their god heart going in the front lines. Okay, interesting choice. More defensible, but more vulnerable. God heart does have more HP than a Grove Heart, so why you might want it on an expansion rather than the main. And this time around, with the with the House of the Fading Saints, you can get all Dervish upgrades. With the Stout on top of it, it's going to be a very powerful push heading up on Shadow Murloc's side. He has the towers, but Shadow Murloc can just, uh, not of war, can just go around it if he desires. They can. They're getting enough Dervish that it's going to become harder and harder for mass masked hunters to do anything. Shadow Murloc seems to realize this, having shifted off to starting building the call and generally getting tech going. Still, that many masked hunters, that's going to be a very vulnerable army to what Voyeur is building up. He does need to keep building up towards it. He only has... Oh, has they do more. not have a whole... Yeah, they can't build anything more right now. If only two production structures, that's, that limits supply to 32. <laughs> he, need, he needs a bit more than that if he wants to deal with his opponents. 64 army supply value. Yeah, you, you might counter them technically, but yeah, numbers don't lie. No. It's all about numbers. <laughs> That's certainly significant. I have two to one ratio is not going to be what you want as far as the numbers. I actually like this not of war really playing the full gambit here. He's behind. He knows that he lost his natural. What do you do from here? You, you can either play for an all in or you can go super greedy and hope your opponent doesn't attack you for a bit. It worked last game, right? Shadow, Shadow yeah. Mog did some attacks, but never really went for the kill until very late. Is this the type of build, this type of greed, this type of uh, greed cheese that might just work out for him? That's going to come down to whether or not Voyeur is able to build enough units. And at the moment, I see they have. They've gotten into the production structures. They've gotten more going. Okay, now they're now they're back on track. Yeah, Shadow Merlot has an, has an attack of opportunity here. If he jumps on his opponent, he might just be able to get him down. And is he... He seems to just be heading right back. Oh, yeah. This time the teapot sees it coming, and not work and hurry back home. Shamrock's not committing. No, as as has been typical. They're not going to commit until it's truly necessary. Good idea for Boyer though, dropping the mines there just in case. That makes it a bit harder for Merlot to get in. They do slow everything down, and make it take more damage. And why not chase off, kill off some of these mass hunters, maybe close the gap in the army because that has been a consistent problem this game. For Voyeur. Yeah, on top of his opponent. Well, his third base is up. His natural and third base, he's going to be catching up on the economy a bit faster that way as his opponent's uh, third is slightly slower. And Shadow Merlock playing the same strategy last time, getting towers all over the place. He wants that map control. He wants to see where his opponent is coming from. He has a complete east side cover at this point. Mm -hmm. And you're right. The vision is the big thing. Seeing where your opponent is coming from is the biggest asset you get from towers. And that is exactly where Shadow Murloc is going to make it so much... Like for Voyeur, their army is well built to go for runbys. But how are you going to do that when your opponent can basically see everything? Like, where are you going to run by from or to? Or by, for that matter. He has an angel arm and... Oh, wow. Heading for the heavy, heavy tech immediately. Okay. That's... I have that's a choice. Yeah, I have virals. You love those Sharos. Sharos are great spellcasters. A bit expensive for only... Well, he has this third base up, so you can afford mm -hmm. them. Might not be able to afford more units, though. As I mean... Army supply, Sharu, 100 to 53. True, but Sharu are very ether-heavy. And the Eye of Aros also gives you some Spari upgrades, so... It's... I mean, it's kind of how it's built in, is that it gets... You get Sapari, you get Sapari and Sharu is kind of a combo. Like to burn both ether and alloy, and you get fully upgraded as a party in the process with extra shields and everything. And to be it's, fair, he's not lacking. Yeah. He's not lacking on ether. He has a thousand ether already. Oh no, absolutely not. That's the thing is, Voyeur's ether count has in both games been consistently high, and now they actually have a third base. They're able to get the alloy needed to spend that ether. Yeah, sure. Sharmalak was a bit too slow on attacking at this point. He's still taking up. He's still deciding what type of tech he wants to go for to deal with his opponent's army. But at the same time, he's just expanding all over the place. He's saying, oh, you know, 
I have the tower here to defend. I'll know if you're coming, and I'll just take the space that's easily defended. Just have the more regular triangular base. That leaves the triangular base open for if Shadow Murloc needs something more defensible. So speaking of, man, Shadow Murloc can see everything now. Like there, there is nowhere on the map that Voyeur can just sneak to. They have to, if they're gonna go, they gotta take a fight. And on top of it, he still has 200 pirate behind all of this. Both of them do, though. No oh, yeah. they had reason to use Pyre. Yeah, there hasn't which been I really a big yeah. fight. There's been a I mean, Shadow Murloc but... has had towers. They've been building towers everywhere. So there's that. And if you're not taking fights, tower is one of the most efficient ways to use it. You get map control, you get a healing spot, forward point of attack. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I mean? Although, with Mala, there is reason to use blood wells, but then towers are okay. I mean, they don't give you pyre if you're getting fought into them, but that's... I think on Frontiers, that's a bit of a harder, like, harder sell, a harder way to approach it. Like, if you don't set up the blood wells in the right spot. It's hard to know what the right spot's going to be. Oh, uh, well, this <laughs> counterattack is uh, ambitious. Yeah, that's that's a way of putting it. It's, uh, it's going to be a bit of a meat grinder if you try heading in and he does. Nope, yeah, those are no, no! Position. Voyeur, yeah, that's the thing about this tech approach is Voyeur has been very clever about where to place things. They did just lose the Ancient, but that means that everything's just even on Pyre count. <laughs> Yeah, behind all this, it, it, it was a low cost to get 100 power, to be fair. He just spent five mass hunters to get all the power, keeping his opponent distracted, keeping him in his base. Mm -hmm. Out of order, ready to head on out. Although, in that process, did get that fourth, and that's the advantage Shadow Merlin has now. Voyeur, very strong economy going into this. They can very quickly set up the Sharu army, they can very quickly set up whatever army they want, honestly. And get in their triangle base as well. The Voyeur has options. Those options may involve getting into a fight. Which yeah, the Shadow Murloc not confident in taking. The big advantage right now is that not a Voyeur has a Jory. And Jory is great in those one-off fights with Salvation. If he can force a fight and just not... All these units are going to resurrect while Shadow Murloc's actually going to be losing value units. Oh, this might be it. Difference. This might be it. Voyeur oh, yeah, trying to avoid the Red Harvest. But there it is. Figures they can go for it. Salvation right into the tower. At that point, you want to attack. You want to attack into it. Shadow Murloc wisely heads back home. This only lasts 15 seconds, and then has a pretty large cooldown. So Shadow, Shadow Murloc just has to wait it out. Then he can attack again. As Red Harvest has a much shorter cooldown, can just attack in his opponent directly. And Salvation is out. Well, that was yeah. a bit of a not a Voyager's trump card, and it's been spent. It's been spent for a minute. A minute or two. Still, yeah, Shadow Murloc, they couldn't really get an advantage off that. They couldn't, like, they, their attack still got rebuffed. Like, that was an attack coming in. Shadow Murloc could have very t quickly taken that fourth in the triangle position, so Voyeur still got a win out of, like, 150 Pyre to save a base when you have almost 400 at the time. That's not a bad trade. Not a bad trade at all. He He's still a bit stuck in his base. He doesn't have an avenue of counterattack. Shadow Murloc kind of still has... Well, they both have their side of the map. Murloc seems more primed to attacking his opponent again. He's going for it again, trying to jump on top of all these units, but not of where heading back to his to his tower, and nothing much comes out of it. Increasingly, Voyeur setting up like minefields everywhere. Kill fields if Shadow Merlock decides to walk into them. Which they are about to. Mines go off, slowdown happens. That Not enough, though. They actually got, they got blocked off only the first few units got hit. Yeah, even the Sentinels here to catch up on everything. That's an opening Shadow Murloc sees. Goes for the tower. Then get rid of that tower. That will be a huge blow to Voyeur's ability to project force. And there it goes. Tower down. Mines didn't really manage to do their thing as Voyeur was out of position. Shadow Murloc still has a lot of slowed units to, to deal with, but they've got a lot of units to deal with. Dropping the Rain of Blood as well. Going in. Voyeur. Trying to find a way to retreat. Kiting back with, with the towers. Their own salvation drops down. Both players want this fight. Voyeur far more confident in their ability to take it. 
pushing everything back, going hard as Shadow Murloc actually losing significant chunks of their army. And every single unit that not warrior used dies and resurrects behind the army, so you can afford to lose all these units. He doesn't care if he loses this fight. He doesn't well, lose any. Well, they, <laughs> they do now. They do now. Salvation's over. Salvation's over. He has to run. He's running as fast as he can. Shadowbox chasing him down, getting those last few units. Deliver from evil. That's going to only go to the... Oh, there it goes. Go to the natural. Only goes to the natural, but that's still the natural. There's still something. The units can just heal up. Not of work, kept all his units alive, but they are very low HP. Needs to head back to his tower to heal them up. Well, Shadow Murloc has free reign on that Ancient. If that fight didn't get any the army value one, he did get the Pyrolite. It's at 430 Pyre. Not only that, again, double the army value as well. The army value and army size. Unfortunately, Voyeur got a bit distracted during this fight, and I don't think they still have enough production structures. He needs to jump on his opponent, and Shadow Murloc... Getting in position, getting the arc, and not of war trying to come back, but that's so many units Shadow Murloc. Another rain of blood comes down. Now Shadow Murloc's going for the kill. They they know they have the army advantage, they have the pyre advantage. The opponents just dropped two salvations, they can't drop another one, and that's it! Shadow Murloc throws in the towel. Sorry, Shadow Murloc doesn't towel. What am I saying? Voyeur throws in the towel. Yeah, Shadow Murloc takes the towel and puts it in the exactly. hand, and he has to throw it down himself because Shadow Murloc what just won this game decidedly. Six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, unfortunately, nine. That really was like totally not for your production capped the entire time. That that was the biggest issue they had that entire game was they simply did not have enough of a supply of population cap. To actually build the units they wanted to build. They, cut, they were floating. They didn't have enough production structures. And well, the game started off wrong for him to begin with, right? Oh. Losing his initial base from the get-go. It did, yes. But and even then, then it was greedy. just yeah, he played consistently. Greedy. Yeah. He played greedy, was able to get back into it a bit. He had three bases when his opponent was still on his second base. He was able to get back to it with a bit of greed. was able to play on his opponent's play style of playing it slow and easy. Not committing until you know you're going to win. But yeah, Shadow Murloc was able to lock it down. Indeed, and now they're going to be up against Santa, who beat Jack Attack to get into the into the winter semifinals. Oh yeah, this is going to be an interesting matchup. Shamrock coming back from the coming back after a long absence. Santa winning the last two one v ones or even three of them. He's been he's been on a tier lately. Santa has. They really have, and good for them too. Yep. Playing different immortals, mostly Mala. But he has his different strategies. He likes to cheese, and let's see how Shadow Malak deals with it. Deals with Santa's way of playing, Santa's uh, tendencies to go in mm. different directions. Yeah, it's kind of opposite. Santa's very aggressive as a player, and will always go for the weird options they don't necessarily expect. While, as we've seen already, Shadow Malak is an extremely slow, deliberate player who will not take any risks that they can help it. So they're going to be either able to just completely rebuff everything Santa does or struggling desperately to deal with everything Santa's throwing at them without having the, you know, actual, without having the momentum to make it work for them. Hmm. Uh, he'll find a way. Yeah, he'll, he has to find a way as uh, we're heading on Canyon, which is not the map Santa's been going for lately. It's not the map that's full of spiders. As Santa no, it's not. Result, not yet. Santa Santa is uh, changing up, not going for his usual spider stuff. He's finished reading about spiders, he's reading about nightmares now, and Zoe is pretty much nightmare fuel for his, for her enemies. That's how Santa's heading it for it next. Yeah, that's not wrong. Actually, he just read Dune, apparently. Yeah. Every single week, a new book, and every single week. Well, you know, Dune's kind of similar. You're going to be under the surface, you're going to be in, in La Coulophon. The lore kind of matches up for Zol just going underneath the, underneath the sands of life and popping up where you need to. I mean, I guess that they have some kind of prophecy over, like, someone who can control the sandworms. Hmm. That, that, that is how Zol works. Child, the child of blood, getting ready to jump onto everything. But Santa, kind of playing it pretty standard, heading for an early expansion after getting his Aether. On Shadow Murloc, he's doing the same he's been doing the last few games, getting the Outer First into Aether, getting his units up up and running as fast as possible. So he gets a bit of a better, uh, better trade this time around. Last game, he went for the Pyrocam, but lost immediately. But he's probably learned from that. 
and can get his units as fast as possible. Well, able to see that Santa's gone for the expansion. Santa will be able to see the Shadow Murloc has not. Or might be able to Shadow Murloc. We're going to catch that. Do they see it? They do see it. Santa's... Okay, Santa knows. Santa knows Shadow Murloc. Not going for the expansion. Oh, going for a late expansion at the very least. Santa comes in. And Shadow Murloc even tried to hide his master Hunter's minion. He's like, well, he knows I don't have the expansion. He knows that I have Yeah. Either. But now he has the Santa has to tell it's not the calls, or at least it's not the earliest the calls possible. Those masters and hunters cost a bit of ether. Yeah, cost a cost a bit of alloy, so he has to be slowed down on the other stuff. I think, it, well, I mean, like I said, the one this kind of one base military start has become popular. But the thing about it is that while you can get tech with the ether later, you can't easily get fast to call because the call are just that much more expensive. Require the ether, require the neurocyte. Takes a little bit longer to get them. You can do it off one base, but it's it's a lot riskier than just going for Master Hunter or Bone Stalker. Yeah, that's for sure. This a call rush has kind of gone a bit out of favor lately. Still the same patch, but you know, metas change as players develop new strategies, find mm -hmm. ways to counter it, say, you know what, I'm not even gonna try it. My opponent will know how to defend it, as most of our players play against each other quite a bit and just know what type of units they they go for. Well, I'm still heading for those three outers. So a lot of mass hunters coming out, but Santa will know how to deal with it. And of course they will. They do, it all the, they do it all the time. Yeah, Santa just has to figure <laughs> out what strategy he's heading for. And with only one Aether, it could really be quite well be anything. As it stands, Santa making sure to get enough Pyre to be ready for anything. I mean, certainly they can summon Zol, they can drop the Hunting Ground. There's not a whole lot there unable to do, but the more power you have, the more often you can do that. Exactly, and Shadow Burlock has enough for his Red Harvest. Probably one of the more most powerful face-to-face -face abilities, especially for its cost. It's not the ultimate. But you can really get into your opponent's face and pretty much win that fight based off that ability. Well, you, yeah, because you either you push them to either kill your units and give you blood, or run away. And then, well, they, they ran away, so you win the fight. Yeah, and if you do fight, you will have keto, so you'll have extra, a bit of extra protection for the net, for a part of the fight as your units die. Mm -hmm. Just very and then potent. And get embiggled later on. Yeah, very potent fight in either way for Shadow Murloc. Popping up, up and early. We haven't seen him use it all that much. He prefers to get map oh, control. Santa, over no, place. Santa's getting ether. I was going to say, is Santa doing the thing where they're not getting ether? No, they're getting ether. They have, they have that. They have one. They have one. Yes. Oh, Miles Red Harvest comes and Zol. Red Harvest against Salt. Santa Claus getting solid surround, but Shadow Murloc with the Kittle support able to apply pressure. Santa Claus, however, realizing Mala no longer on Shadow Murloc's force, goes for a bit of the counterattack. Starts taking out more and more of the masked hunters. Shadow Murloc retreating as Santa is able to hold the line with Zol. At this point, Bone Stalkers are faster than masked hunters, so he can hunt down at least a few of them. Uh, but this point, Shadow Murloc has the number game. He can head back. Santa has to head back after losing his whole alloy line of unit uh, of workers, though. Charmerlock seeing the hunting grounds, deciding nah, discretion is the better part of valor. Leaves the ma leaves the natural expansion. I mean, they and got what they wanted. They made sure that their expansions were safe. And behind us, that was a pretty nice timing push that Charmerlock tr did against against Not of War, and again, it was successful against uh, against Santa. Comes in just before he even gets offering it on the retreat, gets the pyre. And retreat he must at this point, because Santa Claus has the bigger numbers, has a bit bigger speed until... Oh, they're retreating the right into the third. I mean, they might retreat into the tower, but if Santa clues in, they will go up the hill just to double-check that third, and they will find it. Yeah, he does have a teapot right on top of it, so he knows that third is there. So just heading for the pirate to begin with. And of course, he's heading right up to that third base, trying to cancel it, as Shadow we will get his third up and running soon enough. They will, Shadow Murloc having reinforcements. Yeah, we'll be able to calls. get in quickly enough. Or they would have at the T-Bot slowing them down. Santa able to take out that third base. Shadow Murloc not even canceling it. Santa ending up way ahead as a result. Despite Shadow Murloc's clever attack, Santa pulls back into the lead. Yeah, as you said, the cancel really is really, really worth it. Getting those units back. And behind us, the Godheart is out, as is the Amber Womb on Shadow Murloc's side. On Santa's side, he does have the Godheart, 
and heading straight for his spellcasters. He wants his red series up and running as soon as possible. And underspines as well. Underspines under underutilized units in the last little bit. Which I get. I mean, I we haven't seen a lot of Zol lately, is the thing. <laughs> yeah, well, underspine in general, I feel they they go really well with the resonance. As both of them aren't used all that much, they're not gonna you, you don't have that chemistry that goes together, so I suppose it makes sense. You lack a bit one, of both. On the one hand, yes. On the other hand, having Rootway and having the ability to slow your opponent's units is... It, it may have been slept on. Oh, and I fine. like the fact that people, that now at least Santa is going, Oh, you know what? Underspine's got a lot of cool things going for them. Let's give them a better shot. And it only takes two Underspines to kill an Ancient with Perfect Micro. As Santa has tested out. That's true. Fun. This... Yeah. And... There's a video on them in the Discord, I think. Yep, exactly. Santa just showing off that, yeah, you can kill you can kill uh, the Angel with only two Underspines. It's like, okay. No, you could do that. And he's just showing the power of the Underspine, heading it out, getting more of them. I mean, my question is how long would, does it take? Is the bigger question. I mean, okay, I answer obviously in the video, but the that's the thing in terms of, like, yes, you can do it, but can you do it fast enough? Speaking of, though, as Shadow Murloc comes right in here, getting surrounded by Santa's forces, but has the stronger army getting rid of both underspines immediately. Santa losing that root way support, and the rest of their army falls soon after. And I mean rest of their army. That that was kind of everything. Yeah, that was an expensive loss for Santa. He wants Zol to get as much power as possible. But this time, it's, it's him that's going to lose his third base as a... Uh, yeah, I canceled it immediately, not even going to let it... Let it rot no. there as it, uh, at his own for his coming up. Smart move there by Santa. Yeah. This time the tower is here. Tries to do some spell casting. Catches one of the units, but. Yeah, the Red Seer is really simply for... not quite as strong as the Dread Sister. Now, of yeah, course, with it... Blood Plague and Search, that, that's going to be a different story, but that has not clearly been up yet. Yeah. At this point, Shadow Murloc might have overstayed his welcome, but that was just, uh, he was going the other way around with the rest of his units. Oh He's yeah, keeping his opponents bay. That was a, that was a welcoming party. That that wasn't the actual force. And Santa Claus will need to retrieve if he wants to save his third base again. But Sharon Murloc is confident he can take it. As he's going to try and defend his own third on the other side. Santa's still pushing with half his units as others head back to try and defend his base. There's going to be two attacks at the same time. As Santa Claus still stuck on two bases. Third base is up for Sharon Murloc. Can he defend it? Well. Um. Also, can Santa defend their expansion, through the natural expansion? The answer oh. is yes. Yes, a definite yes. And Sharon Murloc coming out with as many units as he can. He's about to lose his third base. And this is just a third base defeat after defeat. All of them going down one after the other. Santa Claus finally getting his third base. Again, putting it down. But army value-wise, Santa comes up ahead on all this. And that's where Santa... Actually... Yeah, they got the third back sooner as well. Santa's... I mean, and the fourth. Okay. Retaking double expansion here. Santa playing it risky. But if they can keep Shadow Murloc at bay, that will pan out. Shadow Murloc only going for one base while Santa keeps his units hidden here. If ever this base tries to go up, Santa will know about it. But yep. for now, Shadow Murloc doesn't even know what's happening. That's the power of Zol Stealth. And there it is. Take Oh, no, not even. Just forget it. Nope, go for the back lines. Take out <laughs> take out the alloy mining line at the same time as you take out the fourth. Yeah, Santa. There they go. That that's the Santa we know and know. Oh, but that's a small squad. He's not looking at it. It gets surrounded entirely. A Shadow Rock jump on his opponent's units. He gets a root down on a few of them. Is it enough as two spellcasters go down? And those were the expensive parts he didn't want to lose. Nope. I mean, Put still got this. the natural. At least got the natural mining line, but is... Boy, gonna, no, Shadow Mellow's not even going back in time to deal with this. Oh, Blood Red Plague comes as out. Well, oh, this is where Santa starts pulling Shadow Mellow into a trap. Yeah, those Blood Plagues on top of Zol, on top of the Bone Stalkers, opening everything up. Yeah, Santa's going to counter reinforcements to defend us. At the same time, he took out his opponent's natural. Natural is down. Shamrock needs to do at least the same amount of damage, but he's just heading for a third. Santa lets it finish. At the very least, just to get to force his opponent, you know, to stay there and attack it while his own reinforcements come in from his own base. 
And he has Ender Base coming up and running, so he doesn't mind. Yeah, and can also take out what Shadow Murloc's building there third, so why not? Santa Claus still significantly ahead, economically speaking. A bit of a crazy game, but... Yeah, Shadow Murloc, both of them have a third up and running at this point. Yeah, both of them have that front, line, that front third. Yeah, but loses the natural and Shadow Murloc puts him significantly behind on the economic front. And take off some stragglers, why not? Make it that much easier. If Santa Claus can push this back, they have the Ancient in the bag. He doesn't have all that many units, though. With Micro, he can take it out. He doesn't have that many units. Gets a Bloodwell to heal up his Spellcasters. And, yeah, his small harassment group is pushed away. That doesn't want to try for the Ancient right now. Heading for his opponent's third base. Fourth base, really. <laughs> Both of them are still alive. Well, third base getting rebuilt. Shadow Murloc... Actually, reasonably able to hold on, considering all the damage Santa's done. And the once damage again, is coming again. Yeah, there it is once again. That extra ambush damage coming through. And now Santa, they've got this base down before Shadow Murloc can even rush in to respond. Ooh, puts I mean, a talk about plague. hit and run. Talk about hit and run. That is how Zol do. And puts a blood plague and oh, Shadow Murloc goes straight for it. He wants to chase his opponent instead, lose a lot of HP on his few units. And needs to head back to defend his other his other expansion. And Santa with the constant distractions. Shadow, Shadow Murloc never... has not even rebuilt the natural expansion yet. This is Santa really like, the pressure Santa's applying has been I mean it's been working out perfectly for them. Yeah, really pulling his opponent at the seams. He's more like doing his best. He has the same has the same army value and supply as opponents. So if he takes a good fight, he's able to take it. And a fight while well, Santa's fighting ancient might just be it. He's jumping on top of a few units. This is enough. The blood, oh, the blood plague right through the choke point. So Shadow Merlin has no choice but to go for it if he wants to attack into his opponent. And wisely turns back. And that's an ancient for Santa. That ancient does mean Santa can basically... I think they could great hunt at this point if they wanted to. Basically, they're free to do anything. They're free to do whatever they want. He has every single spell in the book up to him. Including the one on his Dread Sisters. Uh, Red Seers. So it's just a matter of what they want to do, not what they can do. And notice Shadow Murloc hasn't really had a chance to build out on the map set of towers. The thing they were doing all the time last game to really get in the advantage, they have not managed to actually get out on the map consistently enough and confidently enough to be able to pull that off. Yeah, that's the Santa effect right there. Santa really just stacking everywhere and pulling Santa... Putting all the multitasking effort of Shadow Murloc. Am I trying to get some towers up and running now? That's a pretty good spot. And mm -hmm. yeah, as I said, the tower goes down, but Santa's getting ready to attack the tower with the resonant from the backside. Shadow Murloc will feel it, but doesn't care. He sees his opponent's out of position and can get one of his opponent's bases for free. That's. That's a pretty good move. Yeah, no, Shadow Murloc. Got this off. Santa pulling back to deal with this. Shadow Murloc can just run off with their army intact. They've gotten a solid win. And they run off with their army intact. They got a solid win. There's nothing really stopping them. Santa coming around the other side. So Shadow Murloc's getting away scot-free. Losing their front tower. Bit of a shame. but Yeah, it's, it's pretty useful, right? It's yeah. the front healing spot. If you want to heal your unit that got blood plagued. It would have been a place you go. Now you have to head all the way back to your main base to heal up. I mean, the blood well does provide some healing, but nowhere near as quickly. It's always the issue you want. I want everything as fast as possible. I want mm -hmm. my healing up. I want my healing on all my units. And Santa wants his Akalux. And Santa will have his Akalux. Santa wants the Ancient too, and Shadow Merle, I can't really contest that. I mean, I mean five mass yeah, hunters, no. that's not quite enough. <laughs> no, you know, no this all the way is Santa... Out of that. Santa's just running away with the pyre. Shadow Murloc off the towers. I mean, that's the thing. That's where Shadow Murloc's spending their pyre, which means in fights, they don't have Red Harvest available to them. They do have tower support if they want to use that as a, I mean, as a fire base or just as a retreat point or whatever, which is all well and good, but it is worth noting. They do not have any way of really projecting force in the fight beyond their units. Yeah, strike group not managing all that much as Santa Claus taking that center fifth now. 
And the Hidden Six, the, they are expanding pretty quickly. Chatham Murloc does have the tower support in this fight. Santa Claus goes for it. Chatham Murloc a little bit slightly out of position with their forces, but... Oh, the Blood Plagues come down immediately. Blood Plagues. We have the, the Kittle in response. Birthing Storms are up. Great Hunt is dropped. But after losing half of their army, Shadow Murloc will still be able to come through here. But double Zolt. Oh, right. You can do double that. Double Zolt And Great Hunt if you have the fire for it. Yeah, double Zolt time. He really wants to get this position. Santa will get the position. But it costs of most of his units. He has four resonance left to Acolytes. They're expensive units. But he they, lost all his front line. Yes, they we are, know they're fake. They are, but Shadow Murloc lost a significant amount of their army as well. Ah, uh, yeah. Now the so. question is, does San is Santa sure he wants to keep pushing here? As his opponents reinforce, we're just going to see him spawn immediately. Oh, yeah, that, there's, right there it is. There's the reinforcement wave. How's that going to go? Oh, it's, uh, I have <laughs> doubts it's going to go well for Santa. Well, they have the Ecolox and Resonance. They could take out the expansion without... Risking themselves too, too much. Yeah, at this point, Shadow Murloc wants to head for a full surround, but might be... I mean, he lost a few buildings in the process. Here comes the here comes the behemoths from the back, which will help with reinforcement. The Another blood plague is on the back units. Oh, not enough. Even with the blood plague, does reduce the amount of times they can fire off their birthing storm, though. Because, again, our units can use their health as it just cast spells. Yeah, it's all about the blood. All yep, about keeping all the, the blood. blood up and running. Uh, behind all this, Santa was heading for his sec for his dual prong attack. So isn't his opponent's natural again? Won't get the main base this time, but leaves some production structures and a blood well. Those production structures being very effective. I mean, get rid of those. Of course, can't build, can't rebuild the army, giving Santa Claus that much more room to breathe. Like Shadow Merlin is... can't threaten a counterattack at this point because of the lack of production structures. Yeah, Santa is rebuilding everything as fast as possible. And, oh, even gets another... Oh, oh that, that was, was building some Arrowhawks. Though it would have been... That would have been it for the behemoths, but... No, well, good call with Santa. Taking out that bone can of priority. Yeah, now Shadow Murlocs... Like, now they're just on the back foot. Like, they have behemoths available. Santa knows it, but doesn't... What difference does it make? I mean, you need to eventually. And here we go, Santa not leaving Shadow Murloc a second to regroup. Coming right back why, into the fight. That's how Santa likes it. Even mm -hmm. putting some some precautionary blood plagues to stop his opponent from jumping on his behemoths. But with that many behemoths, that's a lot of Keto and Keto dishing out the pain. They come out and jump on all the units. But as the Keto run out, nope, they never run out. They're never running out. No, they keep it's behem when, you have behem when you have five behemoths, the Keetle don't stop. Keetle don't, don't stop, won't stop. They're coming on top. And Shamrock tries to jump on top of him. A few units he has. The blood plate comes down once again. Fortunately for them, the route was a little mistimed as Shadow Murloc's army was unable to take advantage to get rid of Santa's behemoths. Santa, at the same time, just... Ripping apart yet another base. That's been the story of this game, is Santa constantly going around with strike forces to take out Shadow Murloc's economy. Yes. Shadow Murloc doing his best, but as his production structures go down, he won't be able, even able to rebuild. It won't be a matter of supply, it's just a matter of buildings to build the units from. Mm -hmm. Aerox oh, once yeah. again being attempted. It's not going to live long enough. This entire base is, what, 20 seconds to live? The Aerox... I mean, unless the bone canopies hit last, the Aerox... No, it's not even going to have a chance to come out. Santa Claus taking game one, and we'll have the choice of map for game... Or Shadow Marlock, we'll get the choice of map for game two. Pretty exciting. As, uh... So what, he, what he heads for? I do like this timing attack on Shadow Marlock. He always starts up with, off with it, gets a lot of mass hunters, attacks mm. before offering is even done. It's a bit of an unusual timing, as you'd like to time it at the same time. But not this time around. Merlock's confident in his, uh, his Mass Hunter Micro can just jump in, kill a few units, then run back. If we head back to the province, that has been lost. Uh-huh. The province is the damned. And he come back, at least with Shadow Merlock, he's, he's picking it up more often than not. The timing attack wasn't bad. The fact that it got scouted a bit, 
didn't help. Like, Sandin knew what was happening. The, the main thing I noticed was just that Shadow Murloc just didn't have any way of really stopping Sandus harassments. Yeah. I like, didn't have units in the back or a stack defense or anything to really keep the Bone Stalkers from doing damage. And That's so just did a ton of damage. That is something I expect to see more of, more static defense in general. Mm -hmm. uh, just because for those small run buys, right? A lot of those run buys are just like four or five units. You cause so much damage if you don't have the if you don't have the static defense, you have one or two, and those four or five mean nothing, or you, that means you have to split out by maybe ten to twenty units. If you have ten to twenty units split it off, your main army is much weaker and the main push is not as strong. See if mm -hmm. uh, static defense just becomes a bit more of a norm. Well, now is the time to potentially see it, as both players seem immortals each. But now in Lost Province, a more defensible map, which Shadow Merlin has decided they want to go for the early units on again. It is, it is it is a map that he knows well, a map that he's played a lot, has performed very well, gone far in tournaments. I get it. He's always going to head back to Lost Province, the habits. Santa, of course, just likes... Actually, Santa, we'd never know what he's thinking. I'm not going to pretend to know what he's thinking. That'd be a... That's generally yeah. wise. That'd be a mistake. He'll tell you. He'll, he will tell you. Oh, he will tell me. But will I understand? The words come from Walter, and what comes from Walter will never mm. be understood. That's true. Well. Shadow Murloc again. Not. Like, going for that timing, going for that early mass under push. And are they trying to fake out the expansion? Because it looks like they're trying to fake out an expansion. It could very well be, but Santa sees it. That is keeping yeah. it until he sees it goes down. And still no second and third altars like we saw last time. Getting the second Ether a bit faster. Well, Shadow Murloc definitely has an advantage of map control. That's the key thing. And hey, they got that going for them. That works. How about those little tricky builds? You play it once, and you're like, oh, I know how to defend this. And you're like, oh, wait, I actually don't. And then you try it against, okay, that's how you got to deal with it. Mm. Of course, the answer to a lot of units often just a lot of units of your own. But then it's a But bit that's hard. where the question is, like, do you expand first because you get more units later? Or do you go for units first so that you just have, like, the pyre to support your forces and just more units at a point where you can attack your opponent's expansion? Or... That's, the, that's the, the eternal question. question. The eternal question. <laughs> It's actually more of a relevant question when you're talking about third bases. Uh -huh. Especially in Lost Province. Natural expansions are very easily defended on Lost Province, but third bases are a different story. <laughs> yeah, for the, the third base timing is really the big question at all times. Like, oh, do I take it or I need to get up to 64 supply of units Gale for a timing attack? And this time Santa has a few more units. Bone Stalkers outrun those mass hunters and might just get their last little toothpick into his opponent's mouth, but... Oh, he does. Oh, they do. And then runs back. They do. Okay, this time not going for free altars, super fast. Getting get offering before any type of timing push. And Santa has complete map control with his many, many bonus Are offers. Are they going to be going for... No, they're going for Zakal. Ooh, Zakal's. So I'm looking at their like what they're building, how much they're building of stuff. Oh, no. Oh, expansion cancel. Is that expansion cancel just because they can't... Probably because they can't hold it. Yeah, so say, is that deliberate Santa. for Zakal or... Could have been both, honestly. That's not an uncommon thing we've seen in cancel expansion for, like, a feint into mass Makes units. Selfish. But honestly, that wasn't a bad call for just Santa's force. Like, Santa's at attack there. Yeah, this point, Santa doesn't even have to keep pushing. He did the damage. For he did. Stay outside just to make sure and figure out what's going on. Sending bone stalkers on the east pathway. No, they, <laughs> they see it. Where? They see well, what's going on. Calls. Like, yes, it was... It was cancelled, but Shadow Murloc, they had plausible deniability because of Santa's attack, but that has been removed as all the Zakal are on the board. And yeah, now Santa has to figure out how does he deal with this mass of Zakals. This is not a trivial amount to deal with. And on top of it, Shadow Murloc even has enough power to cast whatever he wants to cast, Red Harvest, on top of his opponents. This means he's going to get a free base kill if uh, Santa tries to commit on top of it. See how Santa deals with it. He's getting to hunting grounds. That's really the way to go about it. Hunting grounds doubles the damage on their first shot and needs to make that first shot count. Well, with two dozen bone stalkers, that's definitely uh, that can absolutely work. Yeah, so it goes. Shadow Murloc walks right into it. 
gets hit, losing one's a call, two's a call, drops the Red Harvest. And the kid will start turning everything around. Even with Zul Summon for Santa, Shadow Murloc just goes for it. They have to win this. This is an all-in for Shadow Murloc. And they know it, and they are making it work. Much as they can, but is it enough? Santa's reinforcement will be coming so much quicker than his opponent. Zul is still summoned, and Santa's moving back up the hill. Oh, Zul's he actually being... Zul has been the big story here. Without Zul now, Santa's going to have a much harder time holding this. The reinforcements are coming in, but... Shadow That's not Murloc. many units. That's not they many do. units from Shadow Murloc. They aren't. It's not, but they have reinforcements on the way. They're coming but as fast as they can. Enough. Yeah, Santa's jumping on a few units remaining. All his bone is coming up. And the hunting ground is just perfect there. Getting the double shot on those first units. Red Harvest comes a few seconds too late. And Santa's able to hold on Shadow Murloc. Unfortunately, just not quite enough this time around. Yeah. He's going to try for a yeah. second round. He's going to try for a second round. Well, they got the split. Santa Claus trying to find ways of getting around this, as usual. Yeah, Santa going for a backline assault. And another Hunting Grounds has been set up. Will it get up before... Not enough is going to get up before these forces come in. It will. Okay, never mind. Another Red Harvest to drop. But in time this time. Yeah, Red Harvest even, from the get-go. Uh, but even then, there's just not as enough as a call. He's coming in as fast as he can. Santa... Just microing his way out of the Red Harvest zone. He knows that if it's not a Red Harvest, he won't summon Keto, and the Keto's the Keto summoning is over. Now it's just a... just a call, and there's only so many left. Santa Claus has this around and has the numbers. Tanky though they may be, the call simply cannot survive this much pressure. And on the other side, Santa heading for the counterattack as the calls keep making their way across map, but now they're Going one nope. by one, Shadow Murloc knows it's over. GG, we're going. Santa's heading to the final. Shadow Murloc might find his way back to Santa in the grand finals. For now, he's heading to the lower bracket. So congratulations to Santa for getting to the winner's finals. And we check the rest of the bracket, actually. At this point, we do have everything done for the first round. In the winner's semis, Santa and Shadow Murloc just finished. Itlander and Flicky are currently ongoing. I don't know what the status is of that match at the moment. I know they currently are playing a game. As for loser's side, not a, Jack Attack has knocked out not a void. Wait, whoa, really? That's oh, a good great job, Attack. Yeah, that's a great play from Jack Attack. Our huh. resident dev playing the game and taking out not a void, who's been improving so much. But Jack Attack showing his metal as well, improving just as fast and taking out not a void in the lower bracket. Well, Mr. Kareem got knocked out by YJ Zhao, who is now up against Shadow Murloc. I think we could take a little bit of a diversion to go watch them. Let's try, I mean, let's Pete try. Lander and Flicky are going to be a little while, so... Yeah, let's do that. Well, we're just falling along on Shadow Murloc this whole time. Well, the timing works out, so why not? Nah, why not? It's going to be a best of one this time around. And I feel this game might take a while as well, as YJ Zhao and Shadow are both players that like to take their time, play with their food quite a bit before jumping into kill. That's partly why I'm going, let's watch them, because it's going to take a little while for... Like, whatever happens, it's going to be it's going to be a game. And Midlander and Flicky are dealing with Flicky's perennial crashing issues. To be fair, I thought Flicky had, was able to... Um, was yeah, able I thought to so too, it. with the microphones, but apparently they're still having crash issues. Oh. Yeah. So it goes. It, it, so it goes. It seems to be ongoing. He has an eight-minute game going on right now, so... Don't know crash after eight minutes. I'll take that as a win. Yep. Looking at the seeding, this is a this has been kind of wild. Santa's Santa's won, that but Flicky is six seed up against Ditlander. And I mean, this is going off of statistics. This is going off their like their actual results. So, yeah. Well, Flicky, yeah. the thing is, last time beat YJ Zell two zero on the best of three, but then in lower bracket lost to YJ Zell on the best of one later on. So it's like, well, it kind of <laughs> it kind of it kind of matches up. Like Flicky is able to take out YJ Zell, but then YJ Zell beats him in the most important match that that decides on the seeding, the final seeding. So yeah, that, that's going to put Flicky a bit lower. Uh, YJ is going to help him climb because he's really good in those decider matches. And that's what it's all about, right? It's all about... It's well, all they about... usually are, but then Shadow Murloc has been kind of coming out of nowhere here. Oh, well, well you know, he was 4 seed. For that's a reason, true. Right? That's true. Entirely out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. We do, we've seen him a long time coming, so... He, he's been a pretty traditional player and, yeah, showing his medal all the time. Well, let's see them continue to do so. This is, of course, best of one, so they only have to show it once. Yeah, so they're going to go all out. I wonder what faction they'll go for. Shadow Murloc 
probably sticking with Mallet. He's been playing Mallet this whole time. And why does generally sticks with Zolf? So I would be surprised if he chooses something else. But we'll see pretty soon. And Mallet and Zol. So nothing's too surprising in terms of immortal selection. Early altar, nothing too surprising in terms of early strategy selection. Why does though setting up early expand? Oh wow, okay. So we're gonna see the you know the last couple weeks meta versus the this week's meta and how it pans out. Why is this out playing the way that we've been seeing players play this patch for the entire time this patch has been out? Shadow Murloc playing this newfangled one base strategy that's been gaining popularity over the last week. Yeah. Voyager's out, well, it was either this one, but generally, I'm used to seeing at least one Aether just to be able to get the other stuff. But Santa showed in this last game, that it's possible to defend with only Bone Stalkers. Just get enough patterns, yes. and you can get everything out. You can deal with those uh, pesky calls before they can get too much damage going. And that's, assuming they go for call, even Masked Hunters, I mean, Bone Stalkers do start out stronger. Like, unupgraded, Bone Stalkers are better than Masked Hunters. Upgraded Masked Hunters with offering will typically do better than Bone Stalkers in the field. I think Bone Stalkers from an ambush position will do better once they get fully upgraded, but it's like in a straight up fight, Mass Hunters win late game, but Bone Stalkers win early game. Yeah, so it's all the straight up. And of course, Bone Stalkers are just a better scouting tool. So you can send them yes, everywhere they on the absolutely map are. and they stay invisible. It's like, oh. And raiding tool at that too. Yep, they're, they just have different tools, different purposes, but still generally generalist. Mm -hmm. Head around the map. And what is YJZL heading for? Just a bunch of bone stalkers. So no Zakal Rush this time around. Zakal Rush seems to have been figured out by both these players. And let's see if YJZL has been watching the stream and knows that Shadow Murloc likes his uh, lots of uh, lots, lots, lots of mass stalkers just jumping on top of you. <laughs> well, if they're able to hold the line, I mean, the YJZL will be able to still keep their expansion up and then that'll provide the advantage they need in the mid game. Mm -hmm. So this is entirely it. Why Zou is playing for the mid game. Shadow Murloc playing for the early game win. Yeah, With that's this what... Pyre camp, that's going to be, well, a Zol summon for Why Zou. Zou summon versus Red Harvest. Both of them getting their initial ability up and running. And yeah, here we go. The free, the free alters. With the... Oh yeah, we're going to be seeing the cancelled expansion. That's the thing. That if Shadow Murloc um... cancels their natural, that's the question. Well, we'll keep a close eye on it as both of them just scouting across the map, trying to figure out exactly what's going on. And why just out placing his teapots in those corners? Yeah, you know, wants to know where their opponents are going for Pyre. Okay, seems or to be a lot of mass hunters. Seems to be sticking to mass hunters. That makes sense. He's only on one Efer. You need a lot of Efer to. Oh get yeah, they that, they uh, held on the base. They're not. Yeah. They're not going for the all in. Some well, Zakals come off side. They do. I'd give it another couple minutes before YJZO starts seeing an advantage for what they went for. Yeah, exactly. Getting that greedy expansion. Well, that greedier expansion is pretty standard, but still greedier than anything else that we can do. It's going to take a bit of a while to, re to really get the full benefit from it. But Shadow Murloc just heading for a lot of mass hunters. He's going to jump on his opponent as soon as he can. And this time, with the neural site, you might have offering ready in time for that push. That offering can make a massive difference. Oh yeah, they, they're, those, all those they're bound to have it by now. At least when he hits his opponents. And he's heading the long way around, and Whitejout really does not see it coming. Whitejout also looking for other way to get his opponent. And because of that, he's just going to be out of position. Heading for the pyro count on the bottom, right, bottom left, he's getting all the pyro, but won't have any units back home to defend this. Yeah, as the one Bone Stalker that comes out of hiding to spot, oh, I'm I'm doomed. <laughs> yeah, he sees it. He's doomed. Yeah. He want, he's still heading for the last pyro camp. He wants all the pyro he can to defend this. He can be able to summon Zol twice. But Zol alone is not enough to defend this. He might just oh. get her out now. Well, it's enough to buy time. It would at least help. Okay, like, if, it's, if it's, you know, summoning Zol and losing Zol compared to losing expansion, but no, it's a base race. YJ is out going for the base race. Oh, yeah, so let's see how this turns out. Oh. Ooh, Miss Micro oh, getting them attack. right. And two tower range. Oh, and both stars are going there. And here comes well, Zol from the back. Got the defense in the base race at any rate. Those are called keeping Zol alive. Even and with the Red, Red Harvest. harvest. It. Even with the Red Harvest. that's That'll be a bit of a problem later on, but YJ just needs these 
Masked Hunters out of their base. It does not matter if they get if they give Mala blood. Yeah, or even get the Ketos out. Their Keto won't be able to do that much difference. And there's still a few more units for Shadow Murloc, but there's defense of the tower at the back. And here come the rest of the Zakals. And with as many Zakals as Masked Hunters, this push is over. Shadow Murloc has to pull back and... I know he lost a few. The symbiotes were pulled, but it seems like they were still taken out at, in the end. It seems like yeah. the end Shadow Murloc was pretty cool. a lot better. Shadow Murloc was a lot better. Unfortunately, that pull why just that was not noticing, so they couldn't get the base race because the symbiotes Shadow Murloc pulled them back into the towers. Well, why just now just didn't lose, didn't keep theirs. So Shadow Murloc will have add the advantage going into the next few fights, especially as why just just burned their last. Available as all summon. Yeah, it's going to be a. It's, he's not going to be able to take a straight up fight against Red Harvest. And all the units Shadow Murloc is making means that there's no really push White Zhao can, can go for at this moment. Same time, on the bottom side, Deferred is coming out for a blue player. White Zhao is still rebuilding his units, still deciding what's next step. Seems like it's not all attack though. Oh, Bone Canopy. Okay, interesting choice. Bone Canopy off of. So either going for Thrums for Harassment to try to weave even the economic game, go for Aerox as some kind of mass splash damage, like slow burn thing, or possibly two base behemoths, but that would be the least likely option. <laughs> two base behemoth has not been seen in a little bit, a bit out of the meta, just costs a bit too much to afford on two bases economy. Getting a static defense up, he doesn't want to be surprised again. But then static defense at this point, it uh, doesn't seem like uh, Shadow Murloc is intending for another timing push. Just getting his second base. Yeah, for sure. Also turning into a Godheart just for that extra defense as well, or extra HP as well. And it's going to be Thrums. So expect some backline harassment from YJSL. Mm -hmm. The Bone Canopy coming out for his opponent, as does the Red Veil. The Red Veil on both sides coming out. Oh, man. A few probes coming out, ready for harassing. The probes are the pesky mosquitoes of this world. Can just jump and throw big spikes at your head. By spikes, I do mean a meter long no, spikes. spike. Of some sort. Yeah. yeah. I assume they're made out of blood because everything is. As they should be. Everything would be better if stuff was made of blood. I mean, it is basically just iron in solution. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Water. That means you can you can just burn it off. You get iron. You get free uh, free metals to work with. Exactly. Way around. Yeah. So use it right. It's like just liquid iron mm -hmm. to your opponent. It's just not maybe organized well. I guess Lakulathon just turns it into an actual spear that you can use to fight with. Sure, why not? I uh, gotta love those spears. The spears that all the Bone Stalkers use. Or Zol uses. I'm assuming Zol actually uses spears on her bow. That's how she really shoots it out there. <laughs> really more powerful there. Why should a normal arrow? We can shoot a bow. We shoot a spear. Oh, that's, that's solid, a solid question. Oh, okay. that's a fun. That's a fun position for this base. Like a very forward place. You can play some static defense as well. Why out does do this more often than most players? I find. Hmm. Yeah, they're they're not shy about those front expansions. Yeah, Shadow Murloc keeps his, uh, keeps his teapots in check just to make sure where it's heading. And I love this map control from Murloc. Of course, he gets his usual towers on the side, so he'll know exactly. And I think it's a good point of attack for his opponent's base if he goes for it. And that being said, YJ now is prepped for harassment. Curious what the trigger's going to be. I, I assume they're waiting for their opponent to attack and then move in when the opponent's out of position. Mm. And they're they both they're both players are content just building up their army though. They don't they're not the biggest fans of attacking unless you're sure you can win. I mean that's something that YJ Zao has learned the hard way. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, once you're a bit newer to these type of games, you're always gonna be attacking. Oh, I just want to fight. It's like you no, know, sometimes you gotta pull back. Fighting is not uh, is not the answer. It generally is the answer for everything, but maybe not in this game. Hmm. Wait, is that the opposite? Oh, why does it does spot the the timing? Does spot the assault? Not going for the harassment quite yet. More concerned about their front line getting attacked at the same time though. 
Shadow Murloc, not so shy about thrum harassment. Yep. Goes in the and back lines and nothing. Really nothing, nothing to stop is, it. And why does that? What does he decide? Does he send a Vishu notice? No, he wants to get that. The ancient, and he will get it. Shadow Murloc's not even trying to get back in time. The ancient goes down 100 power for YJ Zell. That's a great hunt and a half. Does notice the thrums. Doesn't have anything in the back line to deal with the thrums, but does and, notice them. And, yeah, and at the, the same time, see their thrums. Yeah, the thrums see everything. It's Behemoth. Yeah, deep Mass nice Behemoth. Time. Yep, that's a great transition to go for. And seeing the thrums opponent reminded YJ Zell, oh, I can also just be really annoying. And there he is, sending it on a red veil. I don't think that's going to be down in time. Only three thrums, just not enough damage. Yeah, well, unless he... Unless Shadow Murloc sleeps on it. Or expects the Erevor to do all the work. The Erevors are pretty powerful. They will do the work. It's just a bit slower than you'd want. And if Frums is finding another avenue of attack. Two static defense at the front. Not quite where you need it. Five bone suckers jump on top of it. Double attack. Does the damage on one of those Frums. And the Frums get toothpicked to death. Now they understand what the power of pikes are in their system. They should maybe not do it as much. <laughs> ah, no red veil death for YJ Zhao. Got a Murloc able to save it. And Mind is now still has to worry about spellcasters. Of course, Shadow Murloc now knows full well why I was planning on going Mass Behemoth. Which must be ringing alarm bells, because I mean, if they're going Mass Behemoth, that Shadow Murloc's probably realized it can't be on two bases. Yeah, especially with three bone canopies. Like, one bone canopy Behemoth, okay, fine, but three of them? Oof, you know he has money to go for it. Exactly. At this point, the fight is going on in the middle. Trying to, to go through the center, but you don't want to attack through his choke point. That's a, that's a recipe for disaster. Shadow Malak has the tower on the high ground. I'm a bit curious why they haven't decided to use that as their firebase. Still, YJ Zhao. Trying to find some way, like some advantage at the moment. They have an okay defensive position. Their economy, however, is starting to fall behind. And their overall military position is... It's got a lot of potential. They could build a lot of things. They just haven't. Yeah, Shamrock again, stuck at his uh, 150 supply with 2,000 alloy in the bank. Auto build's about to come in. And, yeah, more mass hunters are going to be built... And Bone Canopy is coming down for those units. So he might be transitioning into his favorite behemoths as he loses the tower at the front, though. That loss is a bit of a big deal. Why just out taking the tower in response? Now is a position to threaten Shadow Murloc's f fourth? Yeah, Shadow Murloc's fourth. And also kind of threaten their third, to be honest. This is not a great position for Shadow Murloc. They still have an army advantage. It's certainly an army value advantage. And Yak looks at the front, ready to shoot at everything. Yeah, it's going to be residual, residual damage coming out every single time. Shadow Murloc, if he wants to go, he has to go in. If not, he's just going to be taking damage from everything. Smart. And the behemoths are on the way. Yeah. Like, Shadow Murloc knows there's a clock. Behemoths yeah, are on the way. They are going to get upgraded. They are going to be a major threat. Last time against Santa, we saw him... Head for those uh, for those Aerox to deal with this behemoth. It's still only three Aerox to kill a behemoth. It's gonna be pretty worth it, especially if there's a one on top of the other. Well, okay, now we find one. out whether or not that is in fact going to be worth the rain of blood dropping from Shadow Murloc. They're committing to this fight hard. The tower's not quite up for YJ's now. They have nothing to hold this. The Galax getting surrounded, going down. Behemoths are up. It's simply not in time to save the day as Shadow Murloc wipes over YJ's out like a giant wave. Oh, those behemoths going down immediately. Not even a second. Zo comes in from the back and shoots her shots as fast as she can. But one Zo is not enough for so many mass hunters jumping on top of everything. Why just out? Why? Now that's surround. Like Shadow Murloc cutting off YJ's out from the rest of their forces. And goes for the kill. Now that Zol is gone, there's not a whole lot left, and that's... Man, looking at YJ Zao's economy, like, I'm... To me, it looked like YJ Zao was focusing very heavily on behemoths, and not so much on support forces. Like, they had it, they had an excess of alloy compared to ether, weren't building support forces, and despite that, they had plenty of population cap available. 
they didn't end up building the support forces needed to deal with a push like that. And now Shadow Murloc taking out White Jizau's third. White Jizau getting their other, or forward base rather. White Jizau getting their standard third, but so what avail? I mean, Shadow Murloc's just gained a significant advantage. YJ Zhao is going to be fighting an uphill battle from here on out. Especially only three, well, two bases, taking back his third base. They just had Shadow has his fourth up and running. Time to attack perfectly to keep it alive. Finds the final frums. But you know, harass is, is a good way to come back in the games. But that might not be enough for YJ Zhao. He's going to look for I cores coming up. And that's, like I said, I'm a bit surprised that those weren't built earlier. I'm a bit surprised. Also, I mean, to be fair, the other option would have been just mass expand to get more ether. Which, I mean, Shadow Merlock would have spotted, but at least Zul would, at least Y Zul would have been able to turn that into Behemoth pretty quickly. And make that miss to pay off. Well, he's going for the back, for, he's going for the back attack. Here comes Great Hunt jumping on top of everything. And Shadow, Mur Shadow Murloc has no way back. He has no retreat. He has to, has to win this fight or risk losing his whole army. It's going to be happening. Red Harvest coming up. And the Keto just gets Oh, spun that is everything. so much. Offer, upgrade, fully upgraded offering. Like I said, Mass Hunters will win in a straight up fight. And when you apply that on top of all of that, all this pyre support, Shadow Murloc taking the fight with few losses. Now, YJ is out, wide open. All their bases can be taken out in the next minute or two. Yeah, Shadow Merlock really played to Malice Strengths. You know, those straight up fights, getting the getting the pirate abilities to just win those straight up fights. It's always less about that, more about finding different ways to attack and keeping his economy in check. And yeah, Shadow Merlock was able to just get his economy up and running, get the full army, get the soul attacks. And might be a bit of overcommittal here, but doesn't matter. He has the whole map to himself. Yeah, that's that has been the story of Shadow Murloc's entire game plan. Take the map for yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's Get it. The running. Get the units up and big. Oh, that's a huge resonant. YJ Zhao looking to cut off their opponent's reinforcements and an understandable strategy, but that does signal to Shadow Murloc it's an opening. And YJ is going to follow the army. He has a bigger one than this one, so he can follow it a bit. Uh, yeah, but as you said, this is an opening for Shadow Murloc. He's just going to jump on top of the static defense, the few units left. And YJ has no choice but to retreat. He needs to keep his base alive. Uh, how they're going to do that is certainly a mystery. Bit of a miracle. Miracle play going for it here, but Shadow Murloc... They just have every advantage on their side. And there's the Red Harvest as well, just to rub salt in the wound. Or blood in the wound, as it were. And the blood and the iron jumping inside the opponent's systems. And that's going to be it for why just that was running this tournament. Shermanlock moves up to the lower bracket, to, to, the, to the semifinals. Lower semifinals. Lower bracket. So, we are into the last little bit here as the winner's finals has been decided we have santa against itlander who better not have started already uh could have maybe five minutes. yes santa said he wanted us to wait and santa as usual is right on that so thank you santa yes we do because we are going to be doing the winner's finals we always do the winner's finals this was just a this was a can be a opportunistic cast yep and behind us itlander two o's flicky so he's not really showing his medal. He did finish second last time around. So finishing second again. Uh, my, maybe even first this time around. I believe in him. He showed some really great games against Santa last time. I'm curious to see how much he's improved this time. I expect I'll, as it's like I expect actually quite a bit. Honestly, this is gonna be a this should be an amazing game. Just for like Santa Eliner has deserved that second place spot. Again, I mean, granted, again. they have only gotten second place so far, but they have deserved, for all the people in this tournament right now, they have deserved that seed. Yep. Yeah, next time around, we'll see some people move up. Jack Attack can move up a bit after a move. Of that's take, true. Not, not up against where. Flicky. Even then, like, even if they lose to Flicky, that's still fifth place. Yep. And Flicky versus Jack Attack. If Flicky wins his next few matches, well, he'll be going up as well. They, yeah, that actually would be their, for, well, they've done fourth place. If they win that and lose to Murloc, that'll be their sixth, fourth place finish. In a wow. 1v1 tournament. Flicky sure likes the fourth place. Whoa, likes it. I guess that's that's not really what how it works, does it? <laughs> <laughs> he just ends up in the, in the fourth a lot. 
Same way Santa used We're to end up second to last. We're number four! We're Where's number a great four! Number? Mm. Where's a great number? On the wall, I mean, some place is considered a bad luck number, but that's another story. Although I guess if you always finish fourth, you're also going to consider it a pretty bad luck. It's like, ah, just outside the podium, mm. just outside of that beautiful three-place podium. Why is it a three-place podium? I guess it just looks nice. Aesthetically, I, I mean, right? You have the guess. middle that's a bit higher, and then you have two people surrounding him. There's two, they're both like, oh, who's the winner? It doesn't really matter, there's no one in the center. <laughs> we love the center position. It always makes sense. I don't think I've ever actually seen one of those things in real life. Hmm. Like, I've seen pictures of that sort of thing, but I've never seen that kind of podium that's, in real life. I feel like at the Olympics they must have it, right? Possibly, but I've never watched the Olympics. Yeah, it's been a while. Or at least I never watched the Olympics award ceremonies. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. You watch the events, like, okay, done. I watch Canada win at hockey again, as they should, and uh, we yeah, can Yeah, exactly. On. Like, what else am I here for? How else will we care about anything but hockey? And that's not even the most Olympics, that's the Winter Olympics. <laughs> yeah, Summer Olympics, I guess. What do Canadians care about in the Summer Olympics? Um, <laughs> I don't Women's know. soccer. Women's soccer, if we win that. I guess. Somehow. Officially <laughs> lacrosse, but oh, I don't know if people even know. That. We're supposed to. I Yeah. I have not seen a whole lot of lacrosse coverage in any capacity, so but we still I don't it. know how much. I guess it is technically yep. the official summer sport of Canada, but how much that actually matters, I don't know because I don't see people play it very often. I wonder if we actually win at it. That's the way mm. sometimes. Like you make the world championship and you make sure you're the only country playing it, and then you win that championship and say we're champions of the world because we're the only ones playing in it. We're the only comp country. I don't know. I think it might be the case because I. Lacrosse well, at the Olympics. Never. For people that don't know what lacrosse is, that makes total sense. But it is a sport where you have a ball and you have a you have a stick for yeah. the basket at the end of the basket, and then you have a and then you do try to put the ball in the net. The net being the goal of like in soccer and most sports. Pretty normal. And then you can uh, and then you can use that net to hit other nets, try and make that ball jump. Yep. And that's the sport. It's like hockey, but in the air with a net. And really also, fast, and yep. really hard to catch the ball. It's like, and pretty violent it's like if you, too. Yeah, it's like if you mix baseball and hockey, the violence comes from hockey, then you end up with lacrosse. Mm. Except you also catch the ball as you go. It's like the bat also catches the ball, and then you fling it back. Fling is Three. a fun part of life. Yeah. Gotta love to fling. It goes so much like, I remember I played it, it. We played it in like gym class in elementary school and high school, and it. I never got it. <laughs> but then Never I've also whites. mentioned huh? I've also have mentioned that I struggle to hit the ball in T-ball, which I should remind you is involves a stationary ball on a post. I was five at the time, but still, yeah, I gonna... was never great at that. It took me a while before I started understanding how my body worked in terms of physical coordination. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Sometimes it takes longer for some kids. Sometimes kids just get right away. It's like, ugh. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of the ones it took longer for. And now, of course, you're hockey loving, hockey playing, normal Canadian man, right? Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, that's why I thought. <laughs> let's go with that. Sure. Why that's not? How should be. That's how it should be. Uh, well, we're about ready to head into Santa versus Itlander and wonder what Santa has has uh, cooked up for us. I'm assuming his his recipes this time stick with Zol as we've seen him play Zol against Shadow mm -hmm. Murloc getting to 2 So he generally likes to stick with it. Itlander has been... Uh, Going a bit around the coins, finding different play styles, different immortals. And this time, he's he sticking with Mala. So more Zol versus Mala today. It Lander, yeah, Itlan or Mala, Santa on Zol. Is Santa going to do something weird? Well, Itlander is. He's heading for double Efer from the get-go, which I think is something he's been doing a lot, actually. I think it's... I say that yeah, Santa both also them. does it. Both of them heading for the weird stuff. And like I said, it's kind of been, you know, one base ether heavy into some units that then it's a later expansion it's a later tech well not later tech later expansion but earlier tech they both just want to surprise their opponents with something weird and both teapots are going to come in and see exactly that weird stuff and say oh this is weird i was the one supposed to attack you and they're just both going to realize oh shoot we're both attacking each other now what hmm. and then often in these types of situations the thing you can do is just expand and defend it. Be a bit greedier in that uh, that economy and just say, well, I'm going to have faster reinforcement. Getting greedier here is the victory you want to go for. It seems like what that's what Santa Plus plan is. 
I mean, he's going to defend it. And Atlanta's the one who's committing no, to the it, attack. Yeah, Atlanta's going real hard on this. Santa's, like, the fact they didn't, they went for expansion before units means they are just not going to have that initiative. Atlanta, on the other hand, going for Mass uh, Yeah, from it, the Or possibly Mass Offering, but probably Mass at this. Yeah, it's going for that setup. Dope. And Santa's going to also go for Zakal. It's going to come a bit later, but it doesn't matter if they come later. He's going to have the extra base, and as long as he survives, yep. he's fine. He's going to be in a much better position as opponent. Uh, so Itlander needs to do some massive amounts of damage with sacrificing that second base. Santa comes in with his second Teapot Scout, sees the oh, three altar, sees yeah, the Yeah, three altar Neurosite. They know what's up. They know exactly what's up. Yeah, and with that base coming up as fast as possible, he can even get some Static D up, up and running if he wants to commit to that defense i'm not even sure it's necessary he'll have his units coming up and uh coming back down for defense if he trusts his micro he trusts the choke points he has everything to defend this i mean that's why you expand on lost problems like this you just have more terrain on your side exactly and... all right hitlander heading out with his first the calls santa side his calls are coming in he's gonna have six his third mm -hmm. altar is gonna be a bit later might even catch him on the map. Might even with the initiative they have. Well, it's just scouts there, but still, Santa has enough time if they have the right position. They can't. They can't push in too hard though, because Itlander does have the numbers advantage. Okay, Santa going for the side pyro camp. He knows he can't take it straight up. Aha. Can't get a straight up one. Clever. But he'll be back Clever. in time. Yeah, because they get the pyro, they come back, they have Zol summon by the time anything is relevant. Okay. Yeah. So Itlander really heading for as many pyro as he can. He's going to have the red harvest advantage. And by advantage, I mean his opponent just doesn't have it at all. And Santa mm -hmm. heading for the hunting ground. If he wastes his hunting ground to kill the teapots, that's not what he wants. No, no. Clever. <laughs> they were they were on... They were attentive on that one. Okay, here we go. Itlander. Long distance mining a bit. Getting more units up. Okay, Santa even putting a mode on the rocks to make sure that if the attack is coming, it's coming from the front and not the sides. Hunting around makes such a big difference in the first fight. Ladder just using this for map control. Map control doesn't matter, though, if you don't end up getting a base. And spots no expansion. Santa Claus knows Atlander is going all in on this. As all in as he can vet, as he can be. Uh, but Santa doesn't have to care. He has so many years getting oh, a Oh, another? Okay. Little bit, bit late. late, though. Yeah, and he's stuck in a bit of a concave. Okay, Atlander's not going for it. It's gonna set. It's it is set. The trap is set. If Atlander goes for it, he's gonna lose a unit in the first shot. Yeah, just heading for the tower. Not a bad and, call. I mean, it guess yeah. it means that Santa has fewer ways to recover out of this. And Santa doesn't have to care about it. He's like, okay, it's a tower. It's a but I have an extra base, and you still don't. <gasps> well, do they? Atlander well, coming around the side. No hunting ground set up here. Yeah, well, Santa's going to hurry on back. But of course, now it's about keeping the base alive. He already pulled his moats. He seems to have a few more ways. And the Red Harvest comes up immediately. Red Harvest supported. Uh, countered by Zol, but Zol gets taken out. However, they're close enough to the hunting grounds. Santa can take advantage of this. And there it goes. Getting the slight... Getting the advantage. Significant advantage, actually, off the hunting grounds. Yeah, even the first Keto coming out don't matter when the numbers don't lie here. As Santa no. has force of calls. And there's not enough micro potential for more of it to matter as Inlander's forced to, to to wall back, walk back, to walk a Shane all the way back to his base. As Santa can just chase him around. And it's basically lost nothing. Like Santa hardly lost anything in the process, maintained their natural expansion. They have they have a lot going into well, the five minute mark, not even the mid game yet. Not yeah, even they sure got we are going to hit them. a mid-game. Not even sure we're going to hit a mid-game. Santa has a big time yeah, boost. Yeah, on yeah, top of it, getting the pyre so he can get more hunting rounds or or more Zol summons for the next push. Or is it like well, trying to try? No, it's Atlanta is going to be able to steal it back, but at what cost? Forced to hunting grounds, losing a bunch of units in the process. Oh, Atlanta is still ahead of the pyre count. Not bad. They are. That's true. And their expansion is up, so Santa's... Santa's going to be a question of what they can do now. Like, if they push and then get a third off of the push. He's got... It. Both of them got their god hearts up and running at this point. Mass Hunter's coming out for Atlanta. A bit more DPS than the... A bit more damage output than those as it calls. 
but is it enough to really push into it? And the concave is a bit better for Sunny. He has more units. He's jumping out of the units. Itlander trying to move back. Zoe is summoned, and Itlander's forced to run back home. He has to go back to his base, and he has so little numbers. What can he do at this point? I mean, they have reinforcements. They have Red Harvest. They're doing everything they can, embiggening what they can. But Santa maintaining that concave, reinforcements coming in as well, and even with the Kittle, Santa's still just hit and run. Getting those hit and run kills, and well, Red Harvest is gone. Santa can move in in full force. Oh, look at that concave. Oh, that that full so run all perfect. those units. And, and another hunting ground just in case. If they last long enough, which it should, that natural expansion goes down. I or, mean, you know, the army. of the concave before the armies come in. That's what makes Santa spectacular. Really getting those uh, those arcs on, on those attacks just before they, they come in. And can try to go back down his base, but losing the natural, this is a desperate situation for him. Santa doesn't have to move in right away. He can. He'll probably even win if he does, but the tower here is too big of a defense. And Santa is going to be content on his two bases. Yeah, they don't want to throw everything away here. Setting up in the choke point. Santa's ready. Oh. No third, interestingly enough. Santa definitely wants to find an angle to get the kill. Eatlander realizing that choke point's closed off. Are they gonna, oh, they're going to get close to the hunting grounds. Santa could take advantage. Eatlander, however, not aware the hunting grounds are there, so Santa... If they're able to attack again, does have a trump card, but the moment, Santa's a little bit behind. Don't have a whole lot to work with as Eatlander trying to push in, and Santa Claus not able to set up a solid concave. That being said, raiding group of Zakal coming around the sides, taking out some pyre, taking out or checking for expansions, making sure that Eatlander isn't starting to run away with any hidden bases, and Santa will be. Sure of the fact that they are ahead. As ahead as he can be. He oh, will he lose these units? Gets out just in time, does it? Oh man. And on the other yep, side, the cat harass goes on a natural. As it's oh, being uh, the rebuild is being attempted and Santa Claus not letting it happen. Ma okay, that red harvest is a little scary. Trying to pull back into the hunting grounds as Itlander is not aware those hunting grounds are there. We're taking a fair bit more damage, though not a whole lot of it. The Hunting Grounds wasn't used especially well, unfortunately. Yeah, it's still there, but Santa didn't even need a Hunting Ground at this point. As soon as Red Oh, that's Harvest true. I thought, out, I, thought it was, I thought it had been burnt up. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't actually sure. But as soon as it's out, he's even used Azul to kill the Natural instead. He doesn't want to let it live. As reinforcements come up, Santa wants to make sure this base does not live. It's almost the perfect solution for it. Against as it. is forced against so. Still, Santa... Please. Santa, Santa holding the line. Stronger army, bigger army. Tech is going to become more relevant now. Like, we're at the point where Santa does have the third, but both players could start have could have been getting tech during this during these fights. Santa especially. Yeah, Santa's been content just making an army of units, just making the biggest army possible, just jump on his opponent. And he has the back door open to the main base. You might not want to commit because once you're in there, there's no way out. But at this yeah. point, if he believes in his army, he can just jump for it. He doesn't have enough power for any type oh, of Oh, no, going for the run-by. Bone yeah, stalker run-by. Well, does a call hold the line just in case something tricky happens? Yeah, just heading back behind a bastion for his opponent there. And if that happens, that means he can attack the natural again. You know, at this point, Santa's just keeping his opponent at bay. Just keeping on two bases. He gets his spellcasters out. And Itlander getting caught up in a bit of a skirmish. Does manage to get the pyre. Santa Claus at the same time takes the Bastion, starts and now taking out those soul, those Amber Wombs. Not that they've been used for a whole lot. The real tech here has been the Red Veil and the Spellcasters, as has commonly been the case in these games. And yeah, the Spellcasters are really showing how their power in the last few weeks. Everyone started building them like crazy, and with good reason. First they were... Oh, here comes the fight as Santa has the nice position with the Tower Foundation, blocking the units from going in position. And again, Hitlander okay. forced to cancel his natural. And Santa taking their fourth at the same time. Of course he will. Yeah. Went ahead, just get build more bases. That's the trick. And Deep Ness coming down. He's ready for get for the behemoth transition. Take out four bases. 
But yeah, I think spellcaster. Thing with spellcasters is that once Ikors got shifted into the altar, now you have a lot more altars to work with, and also oh. Ikor Red Veil. Ikor requires Red Veil for upgrades, so now it's like everything in the everything gets upgraded by Red Veil. You might as well build it. At that point, you might as well build spellcasters. Santa Claus are being surrounded. The spellcasters are on their side. Some effective blood <sighs> plays coming in there. And that Man. root saving the day, allowing Santa to reposition into a much better concave as their opponent's units have been worn down from the Blood Plagues. One more comes through, and Itlander cannot hold this fight. Yeah, so many Blood Plagues went down all those units. They're going to be so low on HP. Uh, Santa's still pushing forward with the units he has left as the Call Force is diminishing as he's replacing it with the more traditional Bone Stalkers. At this point, it doesn't matter. Itlander's still on one pace. That one base is simply not enough. Santa Claus does... Santa Claus has the army advantage. It's a small army advantage, but it does exist. Eatlander relying entirely on tech. Mostly on Kittle production. Santa Claus in the hunting grounds does pop alpha. And that advantage is... All, oh, that's all they need. That's just all they need now. But Santa Claus has to worry about the... Has to worry about the Dread Sisters. Don't yes, get birthing stormed. If you can help, actually, it. does get rebuffed. He's getting he him back home. He doesn't. Yeah, those birthing storms scared them off, and that hunting grounds well did some damage. Simply wasn't enough to deal with you now fully upgraded mass hunters. Yeah, Santa doesn't even have to take that fight, right? So he has on no, four bases. Zol's point is just about counterattacking constantly. He's been doing that expertly, keeping his opponent on one base and under trying against his second base for about the seven thousandth time or so. And something like that, working, yeah. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> Give or take 7,000. And at this point, he's going to... Oh, Santa's going to attack it again, but this is a call is not long for this world. <laughs> well, okay, they're going to they're gonna scout that it exists. I mean, trying to attack it is... It's a, that's a strong statement, considering. No, if a call tried to attack me, I would take it seriously, but uh, a full base doesn't have to quite as much. Nope. I mean, if it's all it's called attacked you personally, you'd probably already be dead before you knew it. Possibly. I don't know what type of creature it is. You know, some creatures just like to keep you alive when they kill that's you. That's true. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Maybe that's Santa with the great hunt. Santa does not want to keep you alive, not plan to play with their food. Does lose Zol immediately, but still, that vision... Actually, not that big of a deal, come to think of it. Yeah, the, no, the losing Zol was a big problem there. Oh, yeah, that and... Red Harvest is actually holding the line. Santa Claus turning this entire... Or, you'd rather turn this entirely around. Santa Claus cannot hold. Losing Zol early... Simply just not enough firepower to hold the rest of this. The Behemoth's coming in trying to help out. Blood Plagues are all well and good, but they don't get the kill. They just drain your opponent's health. If you don't have the follow-up force, you do not win the fight. <laughs> but so low, so low HP on all of Oh, yeah, no. Any any additional fight. Like, Elander needs to go back to a tower to heal, but they have a tower to go back to, and they're going to heal. Yeah, there's something Santa should have killed a while back. <laughs> Shouldn't he have? It's like, oh, that tower. Probably, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> when they had the time, when they had the chance. Well, now Santa's just rebuilding on Behemoths and a lot of spellcasters. Army wise, it landers ahead in the army value, in the army count and army value. Santa's gonna be able to rebuild on his four bases to it landers uh three now? One and a half? Yeah, it's true, one and a half. And the Bastion's gonna be done soon. But hey, if Itlander can pivot that advantage into a couple expansions, they've got this game back as like it's it's even. Like Itlander has a way back in. As it stands, Eatlander already kind of has a way back in. Santa Claus behemoths are a threat, but Eatlander, that was a really convincing win, that last battle. And, and that's really showing off the power of Mala, right? The power of Mala and her Red Harvest. If your opponent just overcommits to it, Red Harvest is going to absolutely destroy you. The power of Immortals, right? It's not the game ending ex unless, except when it is. <sighs> and that's the thing. And that, whether it's game ending or not, is... Well, that's the next question. Yeah, he's jumping back in. His units are healed up. And the Blood Plagues come down again. But the Blood Plagues take a while to take out all the HP. Another Zol Summon. He's jumping out as much as he can. But Itlander is forced to retreat as the Ketos are on Santa's side this for this time as he has the three Behemoths. Uh, that's... Okay, so the three Behemoths are the main thing. Santa, if they hold on to those, they're fine. If Itlander can get rid of those Behemoths, completely different story. And Itlander does have the forces to do that. Tons of masked hunters. They... They sh I don't know if they have bone canopies, actually. Like, if they have the opportunity to get Aerox. That's the one thing. 
Uh, absolutely no bone canopies. Has not had a chance. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's that's advantage Santa Claus. Yeah, the, the behemoths are... Just, the mass hunters can't take care of it. We have to take care of all the ground units for it. And there is a decent amount, plus the keto that will spawn with it. And there has enough for another red harvest. Well, offer because comes out. The keto are being set up. Red harvest is on the field. And Santa Claus realizing they cannot hold this trivially. Losing one behemoth already. Second behemoth goes down. There is oh, so many roots, so many birthing storms. But Santa Claus, if they can keep back the support forces, the birthing storm won't matter. Yeah, it was good. It was a good fight, but not quite enough as Santa just has the more powerful, strong units at the back. And there's a cause at the forefront. And, you know, still five behemoths left out of this battle. And he's jumping in once more, trying to get okay. on top of everything. More birthing storms. That actually could start something. But those behemoths, again, Santa Claus able to hold it back. And behind all this, Santa heading for a counterattack. So that wasn't even Santa's main goal. He has two fights going on. He might lose another behemoth. As always. As always. Now, Itlander finding forces one side or the other. The Birthing Storm comes through, starts cutting into the Bone Stalker lines, but just too little too late as Santa Claus takes game one after quite a harrowing fight. Yeah, most of that game... Most of the game came down to that early decision, right? Atlander going for the full and all in. Santa saying, I can defend this, no problem. I'm just going to expand right away. Mm -hmm. And it worked out for you, Santa. Atlander, unfortunately, was stuck on, the, stuck on the back foot the whole time. Had a great fight towards the end. But one base versus four doesn't win games often. It does not. Still, solid play by Atlander for holding on as well as they did, despite that. There were points in that game where I thought Itlander had the game in the bag, or at least had a very, very clear chance of taking it. Yeah, well, Santa's show, showing that uh, he doesn't doesn't believe in his opponent having a chance. He's just going to keep going for it. He does again as uh, we'll head for our next game on Frontiers, the map of spiders. Santa head back to his spider roots, or is he sticking with the underground zone trying to attack everywhere at once? And you gotta say, Frontiers is another pretty defensible map. You have a lot of strong mm -hmm. positions to hold. So there might be a small advantage for Mal on this type of map. We'll see how he holds up as he's trying again. Now, Zol once again. Yetlander goes for Mala. So similar matchup as last time, just different map. The map makes all the difference. Or can, at the very it least. It may. Yetlander did choose it, so they may have ideas. Okay, Atlander going more standard, one Efer into Expand. And Santa's side, also one Efer into Expand. So they're, they're mirroring each other for now. See how it ends up in the later stages. Where will they deviate? Deviating the Immortal Choice at the very least. Well, that does mean a lot, though. As mentioned before, Santa Claus military advantage in the early game. Atlander has a bit of a straight-up fight advantage in the late game. I mean, depending on tech, but... Yeah. If it like can get the numbers, they can really make the payoff. Yeah, it's about the numbers, right? I feel like yep. if Itlander keeps it going the whole game without just being able to defend his free bases, he'll have a good he have a good position to win to get the whole game. But he has to be able to hold that position, and Sad is very good at getting in your face oh, and stopping yeah. you from getting that stuff going. Oh, yeah. We saw that game with Canyon. I think Santa against Shadow Murloc just running around with Bone Stalkers, consistently wrecking them. Oh, definitely. Yeah, Santa decides to go for the same. Itlander getting the second E from a bit earlier than Santa, but not by much. Santa well, making sure to get his units up as fast yeah, as possible. Yeah. They've got that set up. I mean, Itlander not going for early mass hunters. So they could be going... Oh, no, they are. Never mind. My bad. But they are going to be setting up tech quickly enough. They're not focusing on the units as much as Santa is. Santa wants his power camps up and running. Oh, yeah. Dep depending on which one he goes for, sometimes... I think both sides have benefits, right? West and East. East one is the easier one. You're sure to get it. But on West side, you can deny it from your opponent, which is pretty fun. And it seems like Santa wants to fight his opponent as fast as possible. Heading for the West side. Another just going for the natural one. The one that makes sense. The one on the West. No, okay, oh, Santa goes for the Pyre Miner. Wants the Pyre Miner instead. The truly safest one. Definitely gives you an extra option of attack on top of it. And behind the Santa might just head back on his side after this. Uh, is that how Santa plays? <laughs> oh, no, it's not. Oh, he's just going to steal it. 
steal it outright. Yep. Oh, man, Atlanta will not be happy about that. He took the damage, took the kill, and then he's like, oh, shoot. Okay, that's how it's yeah. going to be. Santa, Santa gaining a significant pyre lead in the early game. And, and that's pretty good for those early early skirmishes. Santa just wants to take out zones to say, oh, you're just going to lose this fight. And yeah, like, I, yeah, I Elander guess. Elander doesn't have a response. Fight. Elander could set up Blood Wells in advance, but that's all they could really do. Yeah, just not they really can't actually either. do anything with any, like Red Harvest or anything else. Yeah, it's not really worth it. <laughs> it's going to be an expenditure of Pyre, but not, you won't really get damage unless your opponent commits to you, while Zol can at least exactly. chase you down, get some trophies. Yeah, so how does Zol commit? That's the entire point of the character. Yep. Commit to fights. Get some stuff up. And Old Leonard at least gets the Pyre Miner, can jump on top of this, but I think, yeah, Santa's going to get way before Leonard can even get a shot off. And Santa... Being pretty confident rocking in that pyre, not rocking the map control. No one's really starting to go for towers. Really, it's like Shadow Marley's the only, character, the only player that really does go for mass towers. Isn't so I'm expecting Shadow it's just going to be a, a push with either Zol or Hunting Ground set up. We gotta love those pushes. Or both. And yeah, three altars so far with the Neuro site on the other side. Only two altars can get the third one eventually as he gets the faster God Heart. Oh no, God Heart has already been. Made as oh, the yeah. Red Bell comes Oh, down. wow, Santa's way ahead. They got the God Heart, they have more production structures, they have more Pyre. That's the issue of going for those early Zakals. They're great defensively, they're great at taking those pushes, but they slow down everything so much with their Aether Calls. It's like 200 Aether mm -hmm. behind, and Santa gets to save it to make his his next units, his next uh, Spellcasters. Sometimes you really need them, but other times it's like, well, maybe you shouldn't have because that's going to delay everything you wanted. Nope. Nope, the power caps are back up and running. Santa oh. looking to take the fight. Ooh. Doesn't really feel confident on that one. Just just hide in the shadows. Yeah. Do that. Right the shadows come back to get one shot off and running back. Getting a bit of an arc up and running. Actually, does Santa have ambush? I think Santa has extra damage off of the hit. Off of the being out of the stealth. We well, just got a red veil. I think it's red veil upgrade, so... It is. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So maybe not quite yet. It's going to be who takes his third base first. Santa checking checking the third base of his opponent immediately and coming in again, trying to get as many kills as he can, just jumping in. Yep, hit and run, as always. As always. Of course, attacking into the tower is a bit dangerous, but if you get a kill, you get a kill. You don't have to worry about it too much. Also, keeping your opponent in check, knowing they're there. And here we go. This spell catch is coming out as fast as possible as the spiders come out for his opponent's side. Okay. <laughs> as the call goes down. They do, but Santa Claus, again, their mass bone stalker is entirely hit and run. They're relying entirely on being able to stay put for a period to set up an ambush. And Eli Anderson not letting them do that and not taking a lot of damage in the process. They've actually taken the army advantage. They have a significant tech advantage. And they're even on economy. So Elander, it's going to come down to how well these, these Red Seers work for Santa Claus. Yeah, incubators are kind of out of energy at this point. They used it to, to get that power camp. And he does. Behind us, Santa. What does Santa want to do? He's been getting the power camps on the east side. And that might just force a, a fight as Hitlander also wants that power camp. Well, they're going to go for it. They're a little behind on their options. Santa Claus with the surround. There's the offering. There's Red Harvest. And... That's Santa Claus reciting, you know what? Nope, time to retreat. Yeah, that's the sign of Red Harvest, right? Once you see the Red Harvest, it's time to retreat. So the type of spell you really need to use judiciously. You don't want to waste your power on any type of fight. You want to make sure your opponent needs to save the fight. So if you're defending something and you really need that time to defend it, or if you're attacking into someone, they want to defend that position. Sometimes it's not quite worth it. As as we just saw, Santa's going to run away from it. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised Hitlander hasn't been building Blood Wells just to keep those spiders going. I keep the incubator energy up. Oh, blood plate going down. Oh, of those speaking of though. Oh, man, those Red Seers. Santa Claus building that up. Building that spell casting for us up and keeping Hitlander from doing a whole lot of damage while you know, going around the map, poking out. Neither kind of, them of gesturing at a possible fourth base, actually. Santa might be going for that. Yeah, Night Order is really gone for that much, uh, using that much power both at a pretty high amount. 
which means either saving for ultimates or just saving for a bunch of multi-use of abilities in one fight. Oh, Whitelander catching out the run by group. Santa Claus going for the harassment, not able to make it work. Good catch by Itlander. I really need to get those run bys going, and that's just going to give him such a confidence boost, knowing that Santa's sending stuff out. Yeah, I'm ready for him. I'm going to catch them all. And there's nothing Santa can do to get me off my game. And that's really the way of mana, right? You want to just build up that strong, powerful army, getting those late red harvests to force the fights, and get the win from there. On Santa's side, it's more about getting those harassment options in. So far, he hasn't really been able to do it, but he does have all those red seers, and that fight... I just go his way. Oof. Red Seers and the Blood Will is still up, so the Red Seers remain a consistent threat. Oh, Blood Plague again. And even if Blood Plague doesn't kill them, the Root does afterwards, forcing them in place. And the rest of them can just head back and heal, so at least it's not a full kill. That's the advantage of, of Blood Plague, right? Well, the disadvantage. You don't get the kill, but at least you force them to disengage. Actually, that Root's almost the scarier thing, because it does drain energy. So if it smacks sure. the Incubators and other Dread Sisters, they are done. Still, the Midlander, not too, too concerned, and with a little run by of their own, because why not? A good micro from Santa, keeping his, his weak symbiotes back. And Santa does not want to commit to it. He has his own base to commit, he has his own base to protect, and it gets rooted out on all of those weaknesses. Red Harvest comes down, he wants to force the fight. But with the Blood play coming down on him, he can't really force himself to go into it. No, but does have Burning Storm. Wants that kid. Okay, we are getting a Kittle Cascade. Itlander wiping out Santa's entire army with a few well-placed Kittle, or a few well-placed Birthing Storms. And now Itlander has all the room in the world. They have double the army size, double the army value. They can just get an expansion right now if they wanted to. Oh, they definitely need to. They need to keep on building, and yeah, that's really power of Mali again. Itlander showing it off, showing the Kittle Cascade, and now Santa's like, oh, right, I need, I need to find damage from other ways because... That's not going to be do it. This one Bone Stalker has a dream. Doesn't have quite the HP to make his dream a reality, though. No, nope, it's going to get caught by a couple and a couple masked hunters, and that's going to be that. Yep, no dream for you. Oh, Santa. Have one Bone Stalker. Does a behemoth? Does a behemoth in the way? Which might be a valuable asset in this fight. Red stuff. Okay, red play coming through her Reign of Blood to answer that. Trying to get to the Ancients. Does heal up most of that Blood Plague damage. Yeah, so he really needs to do. Akluk at the back of Sand Akluk is not the we see the most. Deals the damage, but there's not that many units. Behemoth coming from the north. That's coming is in a, bit a little too slow. late. Yeah, the Ancient Reign of Blood here. Another Red Harvest comes up. Zul summoned by Santa Claus defensively, but Elander's gotten their... They've got their Pound of Flesh. They don't need anything else. Yeah, keeps winning these fights, but we look at the army value, it's still pretty close between these two players. And as long as Santa doesn't lose his expensive units, overcoming to following him, not sure about that. We'll see how it turns out. Santa oh, jumping on top of it. Root, Root on the birthing storm. Again, the Kittle advantage for Itlander. And the Behemoth getting caught out as well. Is it going to go down? It is going to go down. One of them does, and the other one survives, but it's coming back off the bridge. All these units are very weak. There's very little HP on any of these. And, yeah, one arrow from the Akla can kill multiple of these. But, a good dodge. At this, only rebuilding his army, but army size is really in Lander's favor at this point. Santa taking his fourth base. Lander also looking, his, not quite yet looking at his third. He's really been concentrated on getting this big army up and running. Santa mm. double expands, actually. Okay, that's a, that is a bold move. They're relying on Itlander to not move out with a small strike force around the map, scouting for additional expansions. Itlander, however, is moving out with a small strike force around the map to scout for additional expansions, so Santa Claus may have overextended themselves here. You know, if you lose one base, if you have another one up and running, of course, the difficulty with this base, it's pretty hard to run back out. He's getting Zoe on top of it. He really wants to defend this. Uh, but that's a lot of units. Another red harvest comes down for Itlander, jumping on top of the ramp. No, and no the blood though. plague. The blood yeah. plague, man. He's also going to get a lot of trophies, but behind the this, not, was it does not want to sacrifice their army. Instead, using that as a distraction to send their main army over to the Triangle Third. Take that out. I mean, if you take that out, you can take anything out. Yeah, Santa Eat keeps his... keep an army alive. Yep, Santa kept his base alive at the very least. Uh, but now he's still jumping forward. All those weakened units from all those blood plagues, even more coming out. 
Ezlander's army is out of position, or his secondary army is out of position, but this one can do a bit of damage. What's Santa making mess? Mostly behemoths. Cancels his opponent's third, fourth base. Ezlander's still stuck on free bases. Uh, but well, Santa's about to oh, get surrounded. Oh, is that going to work? Oh, the root on the behemoths. Ezlander able to surround them out, take them out immediately. Red Harvest as well, just to provide that extra bit of support, but Santa does not have much of an army at this fight. While Ezlander wiping out all of the behemoths, routing Santa's forces as they... Killing up one of the Acolics, killing up one of the Red Seers as well, potentially. Oh yeah, no, Santa Claus recommitting to this fight once they get the reinforcements. Relying on that Blood Plague damage, it's... Blood Plague it's damage It's a scary huge. amount of damage. It is. That's pretty terrifying, to be oh, fair. Keto are pretty terrifying, too. They come on top of stuff, and how much you can do about it is there's more Keto for Eightliner, and Santa's forced to retreat again. And again, Eatlander maintaining that army advantage. Going for that fourth over in the corner. Well, Santa still has kind of an economic advantage. But they've been consistently losing fights, which... Like, mostly from ability usage. Eatlander's, Eatlander's Dread Sister usage has been on point this entire game. Hey, it hasn't even... Santa's just enjoying his Red Seer so much, but it's not quite enough. You need army to kill to finish him off. On Itlander's side, well, all the spells finish him off, and on top of it, you get free units after they die. So. Yep. And you have Red Harvest giving you free units to begin with to keep your units alive to make it easier to kill their units to finish them off. Yeah. this fifth to nine once more, as the fourth is about to get attacked by a small task force on the south. Oh, well, there is a defense. There are omnivores up. There's a bunch of bone stalkers coming around the side. Oh, that incubator's not going to last long. Oh, but the fight's no. happening in the middle at the same time. As the behemoths are jumping on stuff, the red blood plague... Again! Again with the behemoth kills! Eatlander able to take out one behemoth down, second behemoth goes down, third behemoth goes down, and then we got Birthing Storm on top of them as well. Eatlander trying to be careful about this, avoiding the blood plague as best they can. Don't get surrounded. If they take out more behemoths, that's still a win for Eatlander. More Birthing Storms come through, but Santa Claus has Behemoth reinforcements. Even with the Birthing Storms, Eatlander realizing this fight needs a regroup. Cannot push too hard. They can't overcommit. When the Blood Plague goes down on all the Behemoths, so they'll be very low HP, but can you can you afford to jump on them? That is sure going to try, though. Get to get the but they got the Root! It's Roots, two of them! They are dead! Santa Claus turning this, starting to get a little bit, not quite turning this around, but certainly starting to get some momentum back on their side. It was able to defend his base on the east side and, and at least deflect his opponent trying to come in. Uh, but he has to be careful not to overcommit to a fight now. Hitlander has the economic advantage, has his five bases up, uh, has four bases up, trying to get his fifths so pretty even on the economic front. Yeah, Santa Claus trying to, needs to find that one way in to start undoing this, because so far, Edlander, I think Edlander has had an advantage this entire game. Like, I don't yes. think there's been a moment in this fight where Eatlander has been on the back foot. Yeah, ever since that first army fight win, Eatlander's just been rowing through it and trying to finish off Santa or at least get more damage in. But Santa's been defending himself pretty well, but now is a full concave on Eatlander's side. And that full concave is split. So Santa Claus can actually cut through the center. Oh yeah, he's jumping on top of the, of the behemoths. Can get at least one, is jumping on the second one, and will get it before retreating back. As Hitlander's doing his best, as the Blood Plague just is just spacing him out. And Eatlander decides for good measure just to expose all of his units to the Blood Plague. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Don't let anyone feel blood. left out, of course. You have to have enough Blood Plague for the rest of the class. You gotta love that blood. Oh, that's gonna be an unfortunate timing, putting the base <laughs> down just as Mass Hunters come oh. in. Yeah, Santa Claus should cancel that. There they go. Dude, again. <laughs> oh, it's fine. He has units defending this time. Exactly. Out. Got the army coming in. Why not? Actually, no, seriously. Why not? That was that was a solid move by Santa. <laughs> yeah, and also it keeps it lander there. Yeah. And also force those units to attack the base instead of uh, instead of his own units. So gets a few kills. And this time around, Santa wants wants that ancient. And it not a position to get it, but he will get a small task force on the west side. Santa gets the ancient. I think the ancient was worth it at this point. 150. Oh yeah. Fire. Oh yeah. That's gonna be a that's gonna be a complete turnaround. Santa Claus, they have they got great hunt on deck. If they want to, and blood plagues all over the place again. Just loves his blood plagues. Yeah. Uh, but With does lose his base on the east oh, side. Oh okay. Itlander 
finding that finding that win because it's Santa Claus starting to get really scary here. Uh, yeah, it's hard to be scary on three bases. It is hard to be scary on three bases. Great hunt. That's the thing. Well, Great, Great hunt, hunt comes, comes in. Red, Red Harvest is in response. And Santa Claus. Oh, the blood plague's coming in. Atlanta relying entirely on that Red Harvest Kittle. It's just Double not enough. Play. And Santa Claus taking out the tower, starting to push through. The Zol won't want to last go next. quite long enough to get that many kills, but hey, all these Red Plague weakened units, not exactly a threat for Santa Claus right now. Santa has to be careful. He's still pushing into his opponent's base. He thinks he can take it. He has a bigger army for now. And the is trying his best to, re to reconvene. His army's coming from the back. He's going to get a full flank. But a flank of spellcasters might not be Oh, it, they got everywhere. rooted, lost their energy. No birthing storms for Atlander today. Whew. That saved Santa Claus's force. Like they actually have a chance to regroup and take this fight. Potentially the root coming through from Atlander, however, from the second red the second dread sisters still presents a problem. But now Santa Claus, they've got a front line they can work with. And they've taken an army a decisive army win. Something they've needed this entire game. It all comes down to those double spells. You got double zone on the field. That made quite a difference in that fight. As he must come in, Blood Plague again right at the choke point. And all those games are going to be so weakened if they try to fight. Knowing that, the front tower is defeated. Itlander has to go all the way back to his own base to heal up from that Blood Plague. Yeah, they don't even really have it. Like, they have the Blood Wells. That is that is their option here. Slower okay. healing, but at least it'll, it's not as expensive pyro-wise. Well, he Itlander has the has the advantage in bases. Santa Claus got his fourth up and running as the other one. He's gonna try and get it back up. Uh, Itlander mm -hmm. has the advantage in bases, but is that enough? Santa has the army advantage, a health advantage. And, yeah, he doesn't have a plagued out army. They don't. And if they if they're really well if they're really good in the timing, they might be able to just come root out those dress sisters and stop the threat of of birthing storm. Because that saved them in that fight at at Itlander's natural. Do that again, and Santa Claus could take the game. Okay, Atlander's out of position. He has he has to find a way back to his own base, but will he find it? Zola Zola in the back the lines forces. going straight for the Dread Sisters. Birthing from is set up, as is the Red Harvest. So Santa Claus has to be worried about Kittle, and that is a lot. Atlander's of main asset. Atlander's main asset is coming to them again. But even then, the red the red plague's enough. Santa Claus half a dozen behemoths in the sky. Has to deal with possible losing expansion, but this is a base trade situation. Santa Claus has the advantage. And is used to losing his base at this point in this game, but all those units are so low on HP, they're all about to die. And Santa gets right on top of it. No more red Roots harvest. out the dress sister again. But they're already they they'd spent they'd spent their stuff. Is this expansion gonna go down? What cost though? Those residents. Oh, those residents hold it off. Santa Claus taking the expansion. Defends their own as well. And now Santa Claus, they're finding their way back into this game. Yeah. Solid use of Behemoth, solid use of the root from the Red Sister Red Seer. And Itlander actually looks in trouble at this point. Can he can he survive? It all comes down to that ancient. He can get another ancient gale if he wants, but Santa doesn't even need that power. Oh, I'm saying that it would be pretty useful as oh his units are pretty weak. The blood plate comes down again. No, blood plate comes down. No dressers available. No red harvest on deck. Atlanta's main asset. The thing about the, those Kittle, they're kind of all or nothing. If you don't get the Birthing Storm to go off, you don't get the Kittle Cascade, and you just end up losing a lot. At the same time, Atlanta doesn't have many behemoths. Doesn't have a whole lot of units at this point at all, to be honest. Well, they're coming from the back, the rifles, but the advantage of air units, you know, they can go over those surfaces, and, well, they have to run. All of Atlanta's units have to go for the Blood Plagues, and the Blood Plagues are killing all his units, getting them so low on HP, he's doing his best, Resonance showing their metal from the back, attacking all the units, the base goes down, Itlander throws in the towel as this is 2-0 oh. for Santa. How did he do that? Oh, what a game. Like, what the heck? I mean, okay, I know how he did that, that was... Like, we saw how, he, how Santa did that, it was just very, very careful use of Red Plague and Root as they built wow. up Behemoth numbers in the background, before finally being able to just overwhelm with behemoths. But man, for all the pressure Itlander had applied, it looked like Itlander had that game in the bag. Yeah, Itlander had, was able to snipe Santa's base again and again. If they, free bases is a decent amount, right? It, they hadn't mm -hmm. mined out quite yet. As long as Santa has that economy, he's able to keep going and getting those powerful units, keeps his spellcasters alive. Santa just able to take it in the end. And what a game he took there. Absolutely. 
So we are, I have some bad news for all of you who, all you Flicky enjoyers out there. Flicky won, so he's not going to get fourth this tournament. No, he lost Flicky will get at one? least third in oh, this that's tournament. Unfortunate. That's really unfortunate yeah. for him. Uh, he so must be Flicky so will be up against Dietlander to possibly get second. Uh, that's I know. And possibly first, actually. At that possibly, point. yeah, that would, that'd be... That's so far that's from a four. That's a tall order, but man, they are that's, just... First place is really far from four, you know? I don't think he'd like that. I know. I mean, but... even thirds kind of... They broke their streak, but... I don't know. What can you do? Sometimes life happens. Anyway, well, we'll see what happens as Flicky Neatlander go at it. That's the best of one this time around. Right? Yeah, just make sure they're all in. It is best of one. I don't know what I mean... Wolf, they can't learn they faced each other once, right? They, they had. Faced... They faced each other. We didn't see it. They were facing each other in the winter semifinals. And Flicky lost 2 up. Or he let her 1 2 up. Yeah. Ah, well, so the question see. now is what's going to happen for this last game? Because this is best of one. If Flicky pulls out some trick that Itlander didn't see coming, they could take the game. Mm. What's well, something we've seen before, right? We've seen. We, well, actually, we've seen the law from Flicky just uh, getting 2 0 and say YG is down and losing to him in the losers' finals. Mm -hmm. It's happened before and he can make it happen the other way around. Get his. Uh, it can. It is 4 turn into a 1. Believe in that. It, Flicky and Itlander have already faced each other off in this tournament once, going 2-0 uh, in Itlander's favor. But I won't count Flicky out. I'm sure Flicky has uh, his Flicky strategies. I'm looking forward to seeing what he has up for us. And for Itlander as well. Itlander's yeah, the one, well, yeah, Itlander's the one who actually has to deal with this. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to watch and say, oh, good job, Itlander, for defending, or good job, Flicky, for winning it all, getting your yep. final, getting out of that fourth place curse. Yeah, they are going to at least get third place today. Shadow Murloc <laughs> did get fourth place, which is exactly what the seeding predicted. So, yeah, I guess like first, first and second seed are in a position to potentially have the win, but or have their right positions. But no, Flicky was sixth seed, so completely outperformed the expectations. Yeah, I just love these uh, wonder wonder stuff like that that happened. That people just get do better than they were supposed to. It's beautiful to watch. Like Jack Attack was April. No, he's gonna finish in fifth. Position? That's yeah. just because they hadn't they hadn't done any one v one tournaments in a long time, oh, so I just, they had no results. Oh, well, that explains it. Yeah, I knew, I knew he was better than that. Jack Attack knows the way. Actually, to be perfectly well, honest, that's that an upset. Really... That's an upset. Yeah. Voyer Voyer is really good. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say like it's an upset. Awesome I feel like Jack Attack's pretty good, but then there's so many good players in this tournament. So like, there's no that's one true. I really faced really bad. I'm like, well, there's no one that's I would say is bad ever. So I don't know. Whew. What I want is Tempo and Jack Attack fighting it off as the batter of the death. In or a 2v2? Coming in as well. yeah. Oh yeah, 2v2 and fighting each other. That'd be beautiful. They each choose oh, their I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. They both choose their partners. And there we go. Okay, well... We the part, the... Oh. Ooh. Sorry, go on. No, 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 nothing much. They're both playing pretty identical expand first yeah. styles. On Frontier is pretty defensible again. Pretty fast rush distance, but besides that, pretty defensible. It's nothing to worry about. So many choke points. Oh, yeah. Rush distance means little when the choke points are so numerous. Ah, oh, man. Choke points are perfect for red seers and everything. Although, both are playing Mala, so we don't have Blood Plague today. Or in this game. We have Dread Sisters. We have Birthing Storm. We have a much better root. Hmm. <laughs> But that's about it. That's all about yeah. Different strategies, different way to win. Uh, but here it's double mala. A lot of mala, a lot of mala. I mean, the big advantage. Like Is that identical? Big... What? Yeah, they're identical. Just the timing on the on the construction of everything. Yeah, it's they are they are matching each other, bu like building for building, unit for unit. They know what they want, and they're going for it. They're gonna get it. Yeah. Well, that's that is how game work. As the cat behind you, we hear him lightly in the microphone, yes. being happy, oh. or not. He's yeah, lacking he's, attention. He wants he he's just saying hi. I guess he he's very chatty when he enters the room. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. This time, there's no contestation. Both of them just going for their own pirate cap, not caring about 
about their opponent not wanting to be Santa and just denied him the pleasure of stealing the stealing the pyre. Well, I mean, that's kind of tricky to pull off. Let's be honest. Yeah, well, bone stalkers help quite a bit because they are a difference maker in those early engagements. Yeah, mass hunter versus mass hunter is really just numbers and micro. And a way around there is a small advantage. And Flicky going for a second one, but Illander this time wants to jump in and stop his opponent from getting it. This one is just the last kill though, so whoever gets the last shot will get the Pyre Miner. And this point, Flicky Illander... Just, yeah, Flicky could just get it to uh -huh. deny it from his opponent. They could, although it's risky because they've... Oh, they've lost some of the numbers. Yeah. Oh, Flicky's in trouble with, right Oh, Illander's a much better concave on this. And he has Offering. Offering just came online for him. And Flicky still stole it! Unbelievable. <laughs> Good job, Flicky. That's how you do it. Lost the war in numbers, but still stole the pirate camp. Just denies it from his opponent, because he wouldn't have been able to defend it after that. That's true. Yeah. But hey, it denies from the like that's they're now even on pyre instead of Itlander developing a 30 pirate lead over the next 30 seconds or so. Yeah. Well, okay, Itlander with the fast bone canopy. We going for fast thrums. Oh, double bone Oh wow. This is the fastest oh, wow. run we can see. You don't see yeah, just about, that. Yeah, just about. Six frums in your base, and well, the Bastion is kind of out of position. There's some nice, there's some nice air, there's, there's some nice air area behind the natural. There's a lot of position where you can attack into, and Flicky uses his pyre right away to get that win, that red harvest up and running. And Itlander smartly just retreats. Doesn't have to fight into this. No. Nope. And. Eightlander, man, this is, a, this is a this is a gambit and a half. I mean, they're sacrificing ground units and be able to hold the line to get those thrums. You should be able to with that with that front base. Flicky went for a lot of the calls. And as we discussed last game, the calls were great, but mm -hmm. they're not. They're, they're going to slow down pretty much every type of push. And Flicky getting a faster third base. That's a cost you pay for going for six thrums like this. What a bill! Oh, oh wow, six okay. thrums. <laughs> Six, well, two to begin Six with, and apparently low a ball. lot coming down. <laughs> seven a minimum, and then we're going to have... It's at least seven. It is at least seven thrums. And he's going to jump on top. Well, he's, he wonder what side it's going to go. Is it going to go directly for main? Or what type of push I don't is know. With this many thrums? Like, this is... Was it, we're getting into Magical's dozen thrum strategy territory here. Yeah, but usually that was like a thing he did after... A decent amount of damage. He just went into. That's it true. Afterwards. That was that was more thrum as a kind of part of the frontline army. Yeah, this time. Okay, it's still not detected. He's going. He's going the long way around. It's getting spotted. And... It's going to get the pyre miner. We'll see it. But it doesn't matter at this point. Okay, he's going for the pyre miner first, which is not what I expected the frumps to want to go for. <laughs> that is a that is a choice. But actually, it does distract Flicky from the front line or from the back line. Uh, so now it's time for the that's that much more time. It gives the time for the error of war to come up, and you know, of course, just. Head back to the Bastion. Don't have to worry too much. And Itlander has two angles of attack now. He can attack from the front, but he doesn't have as strong units. And Flicky yeah, knows it. Over here. Flicky knows it. Going straight in, even into the tower. Yeah, it's protected. Flicky's. Yeah, Flicky's. Flicky's not sure. Does pull Itlander back. That's the more important thing. Yeah, Flicky doesn't have just... to deal with that harassment in the back lines, then that's fine. Yeah, it gives time for the Arrow Force to get up and running. Uh, Flea should still be able to get some damage out of the frums, at least force some harassment, force some units back. So far, if they can get that, if they can go back in and get that red veil, that'll be huge. Though that is next to the bastion. Actually, these pyre counts are pretty fun. Just go for it, get the last hit, and get free pyre. That's true. It landed behind this, just heading for the red veil, so we can get the spellcasters out behind this. Of course, that's slightly behind Flicky, but. Then so is the expansion. I mean, this entire thing is Eatlander gambling on taking an economic lead by way of Thrum while holding the line at the front. Ah, oh, we'll do if he does his best. He's coming in from the back, but the Erevor is already up and running, so there's no damage to be had here. Does it have splash? It doesn't have splash. Okay, they he's able to just splash damage well. Oh, okay, gets it down. And now the units have nothing. Flicky is hurrying back to try and defend this. Yeah, but unfortunately, the calls do not help, and so that's... That is a lot of army that just means Eatlander has more map control. Yeah, the army is just in the way. Okay, here comes the mass. The mass hunters come up, but a bit too slow. Damage has... done. 
I mean, he needs more damage than that at this point. True. He's getting his own third base up, but the third base is not quite up. He keeps the map control at the very least but with all of this, forces his opponent to stay back. And yeah, Frums doing his best he can. Oh, more Frums coming. Gonna have <laughs> I mean, like I said, it was looking like a bit of a dozen Thrum situation. Yeah, Frums in two control groups to take control of everything. Flicky a bit, flicky a bit out of sorts. Not too sure how to handle this. Has here it comes on top of everything. Red harvest on both sides. No one's really gonna get the advantage. All comes down to main fight. That was a call doing a significant job for Flicky. I mean, like basically, Flicky's forces are getting a benefit from everything Eatlander loses, and Eatlander, while they are getting some benefit from it, not as much. If Flicky able to body block everything, collapse, just collapsing on Eatlander's force, forcing the retreat, and Flicky. Only loses about five symbiotes and an Erevor in the process of this whole fight. Well, that's been pretty good for Flicky. Flicky playing a bit more of the defensive oh, yeah. game. Got the other Erevor up and running. And the Frums are, are simply holding back, healing up before going for a next uh, type of harass. What do they want to go through next? Atlander can find another angle of attack here. Al oh. coming in, and the Thrums, well, they're just in the front lines. This is not the place that Atlander's Thrums want to be. That's a lot of thrums, though. That is a lot of thrums. There's not a lot of anti here from Flicky. That's true. But is it enough thrums? I mean, Flicky... Depends on the root coming down. Oh, it does. There's the root. Hits the Mass Hunters. Uh, second root. Whiffs. Hits the Mass Hunters again. Doesn't yeah, really do all that bombing. much. The thrums are dive bombing on top of the Spellcasters. Or more at least for Ooh, one You're of them. right. You're right, ZK. That is a lot of thrums. <laughs> they keep on coming. There's a swarm of mosquitoes coming, and behind us, Atlander going around the map to find more things to heal, to get some HP from, uh, to get some power from. Atlander has a pretty decent power lead from all of this. Oh yeah, they've got. They can just drop rain and blood in the next attack if they wanted to, and they probably will too. They've got. They're gaining a significant advantage in army value, and army size. They could just push in on an attack, commit hard, and take it. Got so many frames. Where will the fronts be used next? Okay, Bone Canopy coming down from, from Flicky himself. He might just be going for some Aerox. Aerox just deal yeah. with them so well, if you can hit them. I expect... I have expect Thrums are just going to be in the front lines. Like, a that significant chunk of Flicky's army investment is Thrums, and a significant chunk of... Sorry, Lightlander's army investment is Thrums, and Flicky's army is was, at least, a lot of Zakal. Already one Dread Sister goes down, second Dread Sister goes down as well. Birthing Storm dropped onto Flicky. Itlander having their own Dread Sisters. Yeah, we'll get that damage. Is that going to start turning into Kittle? Oh, but that's not a really quite, nicer... but it is damage. It's a nicer arc for Flicky, though. He was able to get the damage, but not enough. He heads back to his tower. He can heal up. And the Frums, the Frums thrumming it all, thrumming along. Yep. Just thrumming all over the place. Yeah, they never stop thrumming. Yeah. And it's nice. It's a nice arc of units from Flicky, getting some units a bit everywhere across the map. Well, if they, get, if they regroup in time, Flicky has been able to rebuild since the last fight. And they've been rebuilding quite a few anti-air units. These Thrums have not quite the same license they did in that first fight with all the call. Yeah, and especially if... Okay, here come the Aerox and the Thrums of his own for Flicky. And... Oh, first Aerox gets shut down. Second Aerox... It lander. Okay. Doesn't go for it, but doesn't get hit either. Oof. Gets it barely. Oh, it lands on the wrong side of the Ancient. Doesn't quite and get enough. Yeah, I feel like he's coming in here. Red Harvest comes down immediately. It lander wants to get this fight up. It just just, oh, oh, the birthing storm coming in from Flicky. It lander's... Oh, it lander cannot hold this position. Does take the Ancient, ancient though, just in time before birthing storm goes off. And time to heal up at the tower as the you know yeah, jumps as... out of units eight seconds later. Oof. Only a couple though, actually. They, Flick, er, the Atlanta did manage to save quite a few of them. And, and Flicky going for his fourth base. Atlanta getting his fourth base about the same time. Same time as for both players is both concentrating on getting their army up yep. and running. Lots of arrows coming out for Flicky. He's tired of those frumps and just wants them dead. But this point, Atlanta hasn't made more frumps in what seems like forever. Just keeping the same ones alive. And, and going for the counterattack here. Yeah, it's just going for that and going for mass, mass masked hunters. 
Okay. Aerox could have been used to set up Fields of Death. Not sure if Flicky's going to be going for that or just wants the Thrums dead. Probably wants the Thrums dead more than anything. And the Elander, Elander has a surround on the way, offering Masked Hunters Flicky trying to regroup. And their army has been is split between two groups. And there's the death fields from the Aerox. <laughs> Holds back Hitlander's force just enough, but Hitlander responding with an expansion kill. And a few mass hunters here finally get taken out. Oh, both players trying to find find some holes in their opponent's defense, but not really finding any as well, okay, that's a nice route coming out from, from Flicky. And the Rain of Blood comes out from Itlander. Yep, that's a... That is everything on all sides. But Flicky... Flicky pushing the momentum. Some early solid... I mean, both the Master... Like, there's a call into the Master Hunters. And some early spell usage. Flicky, getting, Flicky surrounding Itlander's force. But Itlander's offering coming in. Rain of Blood is enough to heal up Itlander's force. Get the momentum back on their side. Flicky with the reinforcements coming in. Rain of Blood's over. But now with embiggened Masked Hunters, Itlander continues the push. Flicky, embiggening their own. Still needs to regroup. Their army is way smaller and cannot still cannot get that fourth. Still coming through. Another red harvest onto Itlander's force. And that should be that should be nail and coffin for this push, right? Flicky should be able to take this out. The they don't have the mana though. Powerful. They can't set up the they cannot set up the brute the Birthing storms. Oh man, that oh the red harvest doesn't summon that many keto. Oh man, that, that's a painful one. That's usually the the nail in the coffin or these type of pushes. But no, Itlander still pushing forward, getting his units up, even getting the spires up in, into this game. Well, Itlander just about ready for another red harvest that they so chose, and Flicky because of that struggling to hold this base. Like you're doing they do have best. enough for Birthing Storms, but not enough to save their expansion. Yeah, and Slicky's back down to two bases as Itlanders from keep being useful at the back, killing the base again and again, is now not coming back. Itlander might have to deal with some Icor, but honestly, they don't care at this point. The stage in the game? Like, that would have been handy for Flicky five minutes ago, but now it's just not that useful. Still the Ancient being taken. Atlanta goes for it. Flicky getting rooted out from any attempt to take it. Still able to deal some damage to Atlanta's force, but this is 15 minutes. That's 150 pyre. Rain of blood right off, right from the Ancient. And Flicky knows better now than to contest this. Yeah, there's nothing to defend here, right? There's no point in Honestly, if they, if they just don't do, lose anything, that's kind of an even situation. Like, the Ancient became a Rain of blood. If the Rain of blood does nothing, then it's all good. And so far, he's even getting free kills off his opponent. Oh yeah, that incubator was that was not a that was not nothing. And finally, this base is free as uh, the Frums find another angle of attack. They're done killing the base of Flicky again and again. They're gonna find another base to kill, or at least some buildings. They can be annoying. Something, at. anything. There's really not much that can contest them, and the Erebor don't have splash. Like that, they got that upgrade. Oh, this is a big army, though. Well, Flicky getting the surround early is at least going to help. Root as well to help split things up, but it's not quite enough to really meaningfully change the course of the fight as Itlander pulls in, drops the Red Harvest. Flicky pulling back to their tower. The healing is nice, but it's is it enough? Itlander not able to hold the towers. Flicky starts splitting out their force. Flicky was a slightly better concave, but Itlander has so much in reserve that the concave is not going to help. Yeah, that's so many units coming in from Itlander. Itlander jumping on top of everything. Mass Hunter just ready to roll with everything. Roots down the final few units, gets on top of them, kills them. And Flicky's still running for his life as he discovers his opponent is actually on five bases. And that's going to be enough for him to tap out GG as Itlander heads back to the finals to re-meet with Santa Claus. Well fought by Flicky, though. Congratulations on getting third place and not fourth place. You're no longer the king of fourth. You have now achieved third Itlander, however, they're the current king of second. Well, okay, they'll mm. two second places in 1v1, but still. Yeah, I'd still say they're... Santa's the king of second. He got a few first, but Santa has That's a lot true. of seconds. That's true. That's true. They actually are. They have they had the most second place second place finishes of anybody. Yeah. And Itlander 
they're two second place and four third place. So, you know, there's still something to be gained. Now, as we head on to our, to our grand finals, so we'll have Santa versus Itlander. Santa in this best of five. Starts off with a 1 0 lead. And they already won two games at Itlander. So that's going to be a pretty rough. Uh, mm hmm. It's going to be pretty rough for Itlander to come back. But we saw him last time. He was so close to taking it. That was an amazing game. If he can bring it again in the grand finals. Well, that's the question. Can they bring it again in the grand finals? It's an uphill battle for Itlander because they have to win two games while Santa only has to win the... Or, sorry, they have to win three games while Santa only has to win the two. So then the question becomes, what are they going to do to try to take all of those games? Bearing in mind, in the winner's final, Santa did win 2-0. Granted, a close 2-0. Yeah, Like, that's for don't sure. let the numbers fool you. Itlander was really close to winning one of those games, but it's still a 2-0 going in. Santa Claus had the advantage, has the advantage on the number of wins they need. They've already taken an undefeated tournament so far. This is a tough situation for Itlander. We'll see what Itlander comes up with. Is he going to stick with it and say, look, I came so close last time to beating Santa. I can do it again. Yeah, maybe that's just a solution. Try again, because he was so close. It's not a... Uh, none of these fights have been have been one-sided at all. It's been uh, close game after close game after close game. Yeah, pretty much 15, 20 minutes every time, which is... That's close. Like, if the game mm. lasts that long, it's a close game. Exactly. Well, we'll see in the grand finals. Maybe Santa has some new strategies planned, but he's been Zolan and out pretty well, just showing the power of Blood Plague again and again. So yep, it's it's Zolan time. It's Zolan time. Sometimes we see we see some abilities become really strong, and then players try to abuse it against them. Say, hey, you should nerf this, but I don't think this is the case for Santa. Santa's just like, I like this ability. I just want to put blood everywhere. Make you dream of blood. Make you dream of all the blood that Zola can put upon you. And Santa does decide, does elect to go for Frontiers because it is full of spiders, as we all know. Uh, Santa might be going for some type of timing push this time around with Mala. He loves his... Uh, he loves his yeah, time. They, they, they got a lot of practice with that. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? Sometimes players... It's something that we haven't seen as much as going for those big timing pushes, probably on 64 supply or something. And yeah, those 64, time, 64 supply timing attacks on two bases, four production buildings, heading for whatever units you want, and just doing mm -hmm. the big damage. Well, that's the idea. And behind it, you can take your third base. It's often just deciding when to take your third base and how many production structures. It's the big decision players have to make in these games. It's like, oh, I'm good here. I need to take it a bit earlier, a bit later. Big decision moments. It is. That is what the game hinges on. Trying to make decision and trying to figure out what your opponent's doing. Can you punish them for it? Do you have the right timing for it? Or did your past action stop you from getting that special timing? And, ooh. I I'm okay. excited. I'm excited. We're about to mix it up. It seems like we're heading to Frontiers. Bitlander versus Santa for the grand final. Santa up 1 0 in this best of five. And here we go. Santa. Awesome and Ajari. Okay. So there is, there, I mean, there was some talk when this map was redesigned that Karath may have an advantage on it, though no. that seems to not be necessarily the case as much. But as it stands, here's kind of both players going, yeah, we remember those days. You remember that discussion, especially with Santa. Being ours and with double forward Legion Hall. That's going to be uh, fun, right? That's going to be fun for Atlanta to deal yeah. with. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. Atlanta, fun. Yeah. Atlanta's actually saying, you know, I've played Santa before. When he plays Orzum, it's not to play the defensive Orzum. He plays. No. He plays it's, whatever he wants, and it's weird. And yeah, he's just going to go for Legion Hall into double E for before expanding. He's like, I'm I'm not going to deal with this. I'm just going <laughs> to. Smart move. My units up. That's, yeah. that's the right, that is the right response. I'll say I won't even call it a response at this point. It's just like... Yeah, it's true. That's the right prediction. Yeah, exactly. Right prediction. That's, like, yeah. that's the correct guess. Yeah, against Santa, it's, uh, it's something that just happens. Of course, this first forward Legion Hall, isn't that weird? He's just saying it up here. The, sec the second mode, where is it heading to us? That's the big question. Okay, he's oh. heading for towers. He wants that pyre. Yeah, unsurprisingly. Although, you can't... Oh, okay, I don't know use go. the pyre for. Yeah, okay, get the defenses. I guess eventually, if you last long enough, you can get pillar. But getting pillar is not a realistic goal early game. Oh, oh are they going to find a spot? They're going to still find a spot for it. It is a go. And the teapot saw the Sipari come out. And I said, oh, he's going for early Sipari. How dare he? Yep. And there we go. It's like, how dare he go for the exact right thing? Yeah, unbelievable. Of course... 
on the opposing side, inliner half scout at his opponent. He knows his opponent did not go for early Aether. And that just means something weird is coming, probably with Zentari. And, you know, Fire Seers are a good yeah. guess on this. One of the responses that Inlander can just do is counterattack immediately and not care for the defense. And assuming he has units yeah, at base home, race. So he can defend with it. Yeah, that's yeah. an option. Especially as a, as, Itland, as a jar, you do have the recall if you so desire. You can head back home with it. Yeah, by the time Itlander gets to Santa Claus's base, they would have that, but they would have had to commit to it now. Like, they're not doing that. Yeah. They're very clearly not doing that. And they see point. the hollow ground. They should know something's up. It may right. be too little too late, and they have not... Oh, they're not responding. Well, you don't see it on the minimap. You actually have to be looking at your base to see oh, it. Oh, right, yeah. So at this point... Well, Santa's chasing him away, so at this point, it's going to be pretty easy to see. He's body blocking of the Zentari on top of it. Itlander's coming in. He made the early response perfect, but this one's getting surrounded by Zentari, and that's dangerous. Oh, the what early is response is only good enough as long as he's building Sapari, but that expansion... Honestly, it was a mistake. Build more Sapari, get more responses. Gets Dervish. Solid choice. The Dervish will help a ton. They will counter those Zentari directly. Though, you have to be careful about being in near the hallowed ground. Okay, and Santa behind us is getting his Efer finally. Uh, but that's a bit slower Efer as his opponent. Stacking up slowly, the Soul Foundry, the Dervish. And... Okay, Santa's doing his best here. Getting... Okay. They are going to be focusing down the Dervish. Yeah, this one's the tricky it's thing. Not, yeah, well, as long as Zentari have the range attack in the Hallowed Ground, there's not much that Elander can really do. Of course, there's not much Santa can do. He has his opponent contained, which is more than enough. Oh, no. But Santa can take the rest of the map if they want to. Yeah, it's about... And seems like he's about to expand now. Duck double E for his opponent contained. And there's nothing Elander can do. He just has to figure out his next move. What is he heading for? Double Angelarum is his solution. And that sounds like a counterattack type of move, because Santa's going to take a while to get any anti-air up and running. Oh, yeah, no, this is set up Wardens. I mean, you could use it to break out the contain. You could use it to go around the back and harass. It's... Because if they go around the back and harass, if Santa takes the bait, they end up moving in, and Itlander has... Itlander will win on defense. Exactly. At this point, that is the best solution that we can think oh, of. Oh, it's been scouted! Comes in. It has been scouted! Santa Claus, what is their response? They should have the Monastery Advisor on the... I don't know, they have Fire Singers that'll help on its own. Yeah. Uh, the Actually, thing is, don't have any construction in the main base. Yeah, he probably needs a fire string at the front as well. Oh, Monster there's monsters coming down. Because the wardens can just focus fire down the base. They don't need to go for the workers. They can just kill the base instead. Oh yeah. Considering how far the units are. And that's that the just... thing. That's the win condition. Like if you lose your main bases, you die. You lose. And if Inland can make that happen, I mean Santa Claus either has to abandon their contain, and then tr find some way of building ant here. Or they go in for the kill and, well, Hitlander's well defended. And he is, and yeah, Santa just cancelled his, his natural immediately. He says, oh, okay, not worth defending this. On their side, the Absolvers come down, so now Santa actually has a hard defense ahead of him. Attacking the Absolvers is not an easy thing to do. Nope. Especially that many Sipari here. Oh, there it goes. Santa is... Santa's kind of getting broken here. The question, of course, is when do the Zephyrs come out? Or how well is the fire singer going to help against these, against the wardens? The wardens got to be careful. Like they, they just need to kill the Acropolis. That's all. Kill the Acropolis, they win. That is a simple solution, isn't it? But they're not of going for the two. The they are, and the problem is that there's the tower right. There's the fire singer right there. There's a bastion close by. Like it's a tough thing. It's it is a long shot, but Itlander, if they can make it, they will win. Ah, they, they got to make it though, and Santa's still figuring this out. Still moving his units around. Here come the Zephyrs. Had the back here. What the heck, Santa? He's never stopping with this. He has his own Zephyr, so he's going to get some ranged attack on top of this. The mm -hmm. thing is, if Atlander jumps on him again like he just did, Santa can actually surround him. He has enough units to surround the Zephyrs from the back and attack. But now with the third and fourth Absolvers, it's much tougher to jump on top. Well, the problem though yeah. is that Itlander can't really break the contain. Like their main asset was the Warden, and now, well, the Wardens can't easily break through the base. They can't really be used to break the contain. Santa Claus has built an expansion as well, so the timing for that is has passed. So Itlander, unfortunately, their hesitation has led to them not at least having immediate victory. Yeah, but here Maybe it hasn't led to defeat, Zolvers. but it's not helping. Yeah, well, those four absolvers are really the big solution to this type of fight. If Santa can jump on top of them, though, try and. There's oh, a shield. Here comes the shield. Heaven's Aegis on top of this, but the, oh, the Dervish were already. Oh no, one of them's still alive. 
Wonder is still alive. That's that is the key asset. But hey, the absolvers. Why not? They they too. They help. Though There's half of them have gone down. Left. Yeah, that's the big danger here. The Absolvers are the solution, but you need to keep them well defended. And in this case, they weren't well defended well enough. Santa getting his natural in the secret spot. <laughs> he keeps his opponent contained. That's all he needs. Mm -hmm. Although, Eatlander, while they might be contained, their scouts were still on the map, and they will find, hey, there's this expansion over here. Wait a sec. Maybe I should send my wardens over there to deal with it, which is exactly what they're going to do. The difference this time is that the... the the Zephyr is already in position to defend it. Yes, but they can. If this, if they push, this will be a breakout. Eatlander has the forces, even through the towers. Oh yeah, that's a lot of units. And Santa does not have the pirate to Empire and Broken. So this is still. Oh, actually, they would. They would by that point because they either cancel or they just get it from the towers themselves. Yeah, the cancel. The towers are doing well. And yeah, there you go. Free towers. Okay, free, breaking through free towers is pretty rough. That is true. Bit of a shame that Eightlander, if they had like another couple wardens, they would actually be in a great position okay, well, to deal this with is, this. This is the part where Santa has to be careful. He has very few units, and that's a lot of units for Eightlander. Even has, even has the oh, Arc, that Arc Mother. Oh, that Arc Mother is key. We are going to get Empire and Broken, almost certainly. Yeah, Let's get the defense bill of the Arc Mother. Where's the defense bill of the Arc Mother? Where's the defense bill of the Arc Mother? No, Eightlander, what are you doing? He might not have the mana for it. It's pretty expensive, and Santa's doing his best. He has a lot of powerful units. The tower at the front is surviving. It might even get the extra kill. The Absolver's coming uh, in. It's not no. enough. No, it isn't. Santa Claus still takes it. Took out the Wardens. That was Atlanta's trump card, and without that, not a whole lot remained. Ooh. Man. Wow, what a first game. Santa always finds a way to make it work, doesn't he? All right, Atlanta wants to run back. They want this to. They want to run this thing back. They're not going to let that happen. Yeah, well, is Santa going to pick Orzum again? <laughs> like, Itlander even had the perfect prediction response, but... Okay, let's see what's up. Santa, one game away from running another break the game. Itlander going to do his best to uh, <laughs> not die. Yeah. Well, they're going to try for sure, but man, that's... God, that is a tall order. I got to say, Itlander did a really good job responding. Oh, yeah. Like, the only problem, it was, like, it was a really good job responding up until the midpoint where it was, like, hesitation on the Wardens. I think if there was a couple more Wardens or the Wardens had just gone to the main base early and just gone, you know what, screw it, we'll just take it what we can, then there would have been more of a chance. But the delay on the Wardens, the kind of, like, hesitation in general, that, I think, killed it. Yeah, really need to go for the... Because the thing is, if he can get in before the fire... Oh, no, the fire singer was there from the start. He got well, that's fine. The fire singer being yeah. up isn't the problem. The problem was that you couldn't the going in two wardens isn't really enough anyway like you wouldn't need four to deal enough damage to the acropolis to kill in a reasonable amount of time what's it, what's interesting is that the wardens do get extra power under fifth shot so if you just yes. use those shots if you only use the fifth shots to get the fire here after charging it up on the acropolis he might be able to get it pretty quickly and not take too much yeah damage. then he has free reign on everything but yeah that's know. that's a that's an option it's just it's kind of hard because you got a lot of fun other stuff to I deal know. with and i know but it's just i just like that type of fun but oh yeah but that's why like you have more wardens it makes more reliable anyway both yeah. players are playing zol now so you know completely yeah, different it up. yeah just changing it up send is like okay i did my cheese of the tournament i'm saying that as yep. if he didn't cheese before but the cheese that we saw this tournament yes they cheesed on stream is the important thing yeah the rest doesn't really count it's like fake cheese yep not that vegan cheese is bad but, you know it's still Actually, not it's, yeah. it's not cheese. It doesn't make you uh, get as much gas inside of you, I'm assuming. Oh, wait, maybe that's just for lactose intolerant people. I actually don't know. Probably yeah, no, lactose. that's not an issue. That was that. was I'm fine now. Ah, that's a good thing, right? Yeah. All right, Itlander with a hyper-aggressive double, double Ultra Bone Stalker because, again, it's Santa fun. Claus. It's Santa fun. Claus, however, going for early expansion. Yeah, Santa doesn't have to do anything weird. Uh, yeah, course. they've already, they already pushed Eatlander into going kind of one base, one base aggression. Not all in, just aggression. No ether though. Yeah, that's uh. Hmm. What is he heading for? Okay, there's the expansion coming up. What? Why would you go double alter into expansion? I mean, I guess it's a feint, but I don't know. I well, guess still got a. They still got their work cut out for them dealing enough damage to Santa Claus to make that worthwhile. 
Not exactly Santa, just getting his own double altar behind it. And for the double altar, we'll have enough units for everything. Yeah, I don't I don't understand what Eatlander was is get is aiming to do here. Especially as Ikor will be on the way from Santa Claus. Eatlander's It is funny. Mean, Santa. We haven't seen that many yeah. Ikors. Santa. We haven't. Well, oh, wait, no, what are you talking about? Yes, we have. Did we not see last week? Yes, 2v2. Yes, yeah. So we want to see how he makes it work here. How does he want to use his Icors? Is it going to be mostly run bias or just be really attack? Like straight up attacks probably works. He'd have a bit of micro potential. Can he move them back? Against Mass Bone Stalker, straight up attacks are the best move. Mm. And it can chase him down afterwards, too. Yeah. No, pretty much direct counter. I mean, unless the Bone Stalkers are stealthed and are able to get the jump on the Icor. Yeah, getting the arc or anything. Getting arc's always good. Pre-arc pre did. Oh, against did Icor, it's it's mandatory. If you don't get the arc, you're then now you get all the little lines cutting through. Like any units that are clumped up, not in an arc, Icor will wreck. <laughs> well, Meatlander at least does have the pyre control, if nothing else. For now. The Santa Claus is getting a lot of Icor, and that will be very difficult for Eatlander to deal with directly. But as mentioned, again, if Eatlander gets to stealth up, it's not as bad. Yeah. Still, I would say Santa Claus is ahead. Like, just in general terms, in terms of initiative, in terms of tech, in terms of army overall, like... Eatlander's on the back foot right now. I think they know it. Yeah, they saw the Icors. They should know. Here oh, comes Santa the Claus? Icors jumping oh, in. Why is that symbiote there? Were they blood welling something? Doesn't look <laughs> He's like. Getting it, ready but... for something. And here comes the Zol from Atlanta. Santa can just run away. Takes a few losses though, but it doesn't matter. He can just jump back in as soon as Zol runs out. Pretty much. But Atlanta used his Zol, but he still had that much. He has as much power as Santa still, even with that Zol summon. Well, that's been the main, that's the only advantage that Eatlander has had, has been early Pyre lead, but like you said, they kind of burned it. Now Santa Claus, oh my goodness, that's a lot of Icor. And yeah, good response from Eatlander, okay, heading yeah. for a lot of the calls. And that, that can actually, sense. yeah, if he just pushes for the win, he might actually be able to kill Santa with that many, because Santa's still just sticking to, to Icors. Numbers are a good thing, but sometimes numbers of the good unit is better. Actually, Eatlander's going to have the numbers advantage too. Oh, on top of it. Yeah, 48 to 64. That's the big 64 supply timing push. And Santa will be detecting this is a call. It's like, oh, okay. Oh. Time to do as much uh, damage as you can on the run forward. Yep. I mean, slow it down. I mean, Icors are not terrible against the call. It's just a call lasts long enough everything else can kill the Icor in the process. And actually, that was a pretty decent first fight from the Icors. As it landed. Might have wanted to push forward, but this one is like, oh, okay, Icor's actually deal with this also pretty decently. You can't really push forward. They're just sending double debuff to no. everything. And Santa doesn't care. He's just making Icor's and Icor's and a God Heart. Wait, hang on. What's up from the west side of the map? Aha! Oh, they did do a thing with Blood Wells. Yeah, a, a secret Red Veil, though. Interesting choice. Less hey, secret run by on top of that. So, hey, if you're not worried about your opponents going for a big push, just force them to stay home. And it's the other solution. And here come the Icors running away, losing a few in the process, but at least got to kill a few symbiotes. Once that reveal's done, it's going to mean upgraded Icors again. It's going to mean spellcasters. It's going to mean basically Santa Claus has everything open to them. Yep, and can heal up his Icors here on this spot as well. As Itlander has no clue about this, as I they say that, he's getting pretty close to figuring it out. Oh, well, they didn't. They do now. And see, that's the danger of building stuff like this. Now the Red Veil will be detected and will not have the power to build the upgrade. Is the upgrade built at the Red Veil or it's built at... It's built at the Murder Hollow, but it requires the Red Veil. Okay, so he has time to start off the upgrade yes. early. So he, it's not too bad for him. Of course, he preferred if that wasn't detected, but now that it is, he's trying to do some more harass, but Zakal's already present to defend this. And Santa's mass Icor seems to be falling flat by the moment. So the secret I don't know. If they, do get, if they do get that range, they get the range upgrade. Well, the range and yeah. slowdown upgrade, then 
That could turn around once again and become Santa's advantage. Maybe so. And That's Santa's a big if, but it's possible. Like, assuming they've started the research already. And here it comes. Yeah, Santa wants to keep that building alive, that's for sure. And it might have been a bit of a too much of a gambit as the oh, unit composition is no, better for it, Inlander. Yeah, this is no, that red veil is dead. Just you gotta leave it. You gotta leave it. I know you wanna have more you wanna have the red seers, but you gotta leave it. I'm sorry. Listen, that's not a cheap building either, but of course he hasn't been building that many E for expensive units. Uh he has the bone canopy up and running. A second red veil was already being built behind this. He knew it was gonna be lost. Yeah, that was prudent. I mean, it's a bit of a shame to lose that the resources, but uh, compared to losing the Ikor, I mean, okay, at this point they're losing it for economy, so it's not the worst. But Edelander's got an opening. Edelander's got a wide opening. Santa Claus has got... Santa Claus can't even build up enough in time to deal with this. Yeah, Santa's going to do his best to try and defend this, but... Oh, man. Frums are on the way, but Edelander's not building an a ground-only army. He has most of cost, but he has some mass hunters enough to defend that those few mm -hmm. units. And, okay, Santa sees the army approaching, and Itlan wants to make sure his army is together before jumping on these. And they don't have the... They don't appear to have the Murder Hollow upgrade yet. Or, the, sorry, the range upgrade yet. And Santa yeah, more, just wants okay. to get this, uh, again, with the harassment. I mean, it keeps Seedlander at home. Seedlander yeah, keeps on heading back home, not daring to attack the other side of the map. Doesn't have that. You know, thing. It might have that. I'm really not sure if it has that range. And he's jumping on top. And oh, he's oh, trapped. Oh no! Trapped way up. Again, no. You, you got. Go you got to go in. Go in or go out. These are your options. And Santa chooses to go in. No, get few, as many kills as he can with those I-Cores. Force his opponent back and behind us. He can rebuild his I-Cores slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. Hopefully faster than just slowly. Yeah, like hopefully quickly and surely for Santa's, kit, for Santa's sake, but... Then an i could use a win in this tournament. Sorry, an i Eatlander could use a win in this against Santa in this tournament. Yeah, here comes a deep nest to go with the bone canopy. And Santa's still putting more... Oh, just mass, mass frames at this point. Well, I guess all of the call it makes perfect sense. Like, yeah, there are Bone Stalkers, but not very many. However, there was a Bone Canopy, and getting Aerox now, Eatlander could just do that. Which they are. That's exactly what they're doing. Yep, Aerox with his units, the Frems just won't be able to jump on stuff anymore. Certainly the plan. Of course, only three Aerox isn't enough to get rid of all the Thrum. But then Santa doesn't have a whole lot behind this. I mean, the Ikor, they're back up. Don't know if they're upgraded yet. That's a they... pretty decent range. I have not. Uh, I think it's range and slowdown, isn't it? Possibly a little slow. And no, here comes Zoe on top of it. Itlander wants to take this fight for sure. And Santa's running away as the Frums in the main base, doing as much damage as they can. Yep. And the Arocs aren't up yet, so hey, more. Oh, we can get Red Seer? They pick off Red Seer. Avoid and the they're jumping right for the Aerox, and Santa reacts just in time as he's splitting his units to try and make sure... Oh, nice split. Only loses two thrums to the five Aerox. It's a, good, it's a good value trade. Yeah, well microed. Santa Claus has more thrums, more Icor, and saving their third. Heatlander kind of behind the curve a bit when it comes to tech. And that's so many Frums coming out. Santa's confident in his splitting ability against those Aerox. He's going to keep building more Frums. Probably a lot of assume that his opponent's done with Frums, right? They got attacks enough. He's not going to make more. And no Aerox no, on no, the No, no, no. Atlanta's going for Bone Stalkers. I think they've, I think they've gotten the message. They need anti air. I mean, it's risky, though, because i do well against Bone Stalkers. Exactly. It's, it's all about the composition, right? At this point, it's like i from Frums should work as a composition. You just have to be careful. Not get stuck. Not get caught out of position. Exactly. Now, Santa Claus... It's all about speed. It's all about speed. It doesn't really have a lot of numbers, though. Something I'm actually kind of suffering with is... No numbers, there don't have a lot of ways of dealing damage quickly to heavy things. Santa does have 270 pyro, though. If you want some Zoles to... They do. The Zoles can yeah. get some heavy things for him. That's a good point, actually, yeah. 
that percentage damage thing is still on the table. Not against buildings, mind you, but against other units. And smite. Has been detected that it is mass from. Can he do something about it? That's ooh. He's gonna jump on top of oh, them. There's the ooh. Did not forget the roots. Yeah, dodging all of them as much as he can. Yeah, good. Those sand has been really on point with dodging roots. Yeah, he's to rest. All these farms are gonna die really, uh, very quick death. Well, no splash damage in the air force. So it's entirely the, up to the bone stalkers, and Santa can just use the cliffs to get away from those. Once again, with the damage on the economy, I don't think they saw the the deep nest, but with only one bone canopy, it's not likely to be a problem. Really, yeah, like the air rocks coming out of there is the big problem. And even then, there's only one bone canopy. It's not going to be a massive behemoth coming exactly, out for yeah. now. As behind us, though, Santa heading for the Ancient. Might be too little too late, though, as Itlander does his best to come up online and Santa <laughs> concentrate on Zolt to try and take it out. Is he going to get it? This is getting pretty close. As Itlander jumps on top of it, Santa forced to retreat as his units... He just has fewer units. Unfortunate for them, and the Ancient still contested. Santa Claus can't really take it, but can not can at least keep Itlander off of it for a little while. Oh, no! Oh dear. Where did That's all the a... crumbs go? Where did all oh, the crumbs no. go? Oh, Itlander might have just found their way to the to this game. They That's might good. have found their tick to victory. Yeah, Santa has transitioned off of his uh Oh no, he mostly transitioned off his Icors, I say as he makes ten more of them. Yeah. Icors are still <laughs> on the table, but thrums, no, thrums are they're gone. Then with the mosquitoes, all mosquitoes once. got splashed and uh, the ancient moved out of his spot a bit. We're going to get attacked throughout all of this. Sweet Lander, they got, they have the Pyre on the table. Santa Claus is still, like, even with Pyre, but not ridiculously ahead as they would have been if they'd taken the Ancient. Exactly, and... Yeah, Lander equalizes the Pyre count, even gets just a tiny bit ahead. Now it comes down to this fight. Santa Claus should have full upgraded. Bone Stalkers comes in with the ambush shots. Gets oh, the Red the... Plague on top of that. Massive advantage on spellcasting for Santa Claus. Eatlander able to get a little bit of damage of their own, but it's simply not enough. They've been focusing more on the behemoths. And Santa Claus pushing back. Taking back the loss from that fight. Oh, wow. That completely reversing everything from the ancient fight. Complete what reversal. Think, yeah, none of them have summoned Zol at all for this fight, yet they don't deem it necessary. And here comes the Zol from Itlander as Santa wants to take out that final behemoth. Both Zols are out, both Zols attacking each other. Behemoth's getting rooted. And Santa only has spellcasters left. This might be the time to uh, make sure those don't die as they're getting focus fired. Oh no, is a call no no, Zol's not enough. Zol's not enough. Those could have been a Colix. And Itlander with a counterattack goes for Great Hunt. They have the unit advantage, they know it. They've got Zol on their side, they've Really don't have to worry about much. Honestly, they just push through. Santa Claus with reinforcements on the way. And Santa has a decent amount of reinforcement, at least to deal with they this. Do. As soon as Zol disappears, Santa has a clear shot at just clearing this. Stunner's trying to make yeah, it work. Over. His, re his reinforcements are decent and on the way. Santa summons her, his own Zol. Well, the reinforcements did get a speed boost from Great Hunt. So here, a lot sooner than they would have otherwise been. Santa Claus still able to get the blood plague. Oh, great oh, man, that blood, blood plague. plague. Blood Always plague and down. root combo. Ripping apart Atlanta's force. Santa Claus moving in for the kill. Oh, the Icor's on the retreat as well. Full, looks like they're fully upgraded as well. So that's... Oh, another root. Another blood plague. Top of the forces. The Bone Stalker Santa Claus still stay alive. But Red Seers are now up for Atlanta. Not for long, mind you. Santa Claus... Doesn't go for doesn't want to push it too too far. Setting up a secure position next to the power camp. Just to hold the line. I get the pyre, get the extra energy from the pyre camp, or for the blood well rather. And just press the advantage. Don't play it too too risky. You gotta be careful with all those plagued units. And Itlanders, units are coming out so much more slowly. Santa really ahead in army supply to dice the amount of his opponent. 
and on value as well, more than twice actually, close to three times as much. Gets the root and denies all the energy on the opponent's dread, uh, dread sister. Jumps on the last blood plague on top of the behemoth. There's nothing left for Inlander. Inlander loses the position on the tower and is forced back. His units are coming forward, but Santa has the army. Blood plagues on his I course. Santa's Santa's in dominating position again. How did he? Does, how does he keep doing this? <laughs> I mean, in this case, it was just a tech advantage. They had they had the red series a little bit sooner. That yeah. that was a big deal for that. The rest of it was kind of even, like they were kind of back and forth, didn't really have much advantage. But yeah, that Red Seer, that early Red Seer Blood Plague just, yeah, just Santa keeps, wrecked Inlander's force. Santa keeps getting away with it every single time. It's actually Scooby-Doo instead of Santa at this point as <laughs> Inlander's trying to come in once last time, one last time with his few units. He gets rooted, he gets plagued, and he gets kicked out of this game as Santa takes another final, another <laughs> tournament win. 2-0 once again. Santa Claus undefeated today as we close out Break the Game Weekly number 32. Congratulations to Santa Claus. Commiserations to Hitlander, though admittedly that's what, like the second, third, or third, second place win they've gotten. And congrats to Flicky for getting, for not getting fourth, for getting higher than fourth. These were some fun games again. Hitlander, we really had a great game, the winner's final on top of it. These two games were a bit more Weird, I would say, with uh, Santa going for his uh, proxies yeah. and then going for mass icors. But you know, Santa found a way to make it work and work it in a fun, fun way. So with that, we are going to be calling it. So thank you to all of you who participated in the tournament. Thank you to all. Thank you. Well, Seamus for handling the basic organization and ZK, thanks for helping co-commentate. And as always, thank you all of you for watching and we'll be back next week. Go join the tournament. But until then, have a good night, everyone.